What's good, everyone? Welcome to the PlayStation Tournament's monthly finals for Guilty Gear Strive. The new kid on the block is back once again in your TV screens, your monitors, and all that. I am Ranch, and I'm here with Guilty Gear veteran, fighting game legend, Nerd Josh. How you doing, fam? What is good, Ranch? It is a pleasure to be here with you. Honestly, I'm super excited for this uh, European competition here. Guilty Gear Strive has been so active these last couple weeks since release, and I want to see where this competitive edge has been in Europe here at the PlayStation tournaments. And I just want to add, I'm super stoked to be commentating with you too. One of my favorite longtime commentators. You already know, man. We've been around the block before. We had many a nights grinding Guilty Gear together, so it's fitting that we're on the <laughs> mic together for some monthly finals. Brought to you by PlayStation, of course. Sure. And I want to see this bracket. You already mentioned, right? EU's been putting it down and guilty gear strive they've been having tournaments it was, seems like every day and we got another one this time representing the eu we got magic rider and raven at the top of the bracket going up against goga and retro mix-up popotino and rolo 1991 zed and acker all of course we got some veterans in this with some new faces that i'm unfamiliar with mixed in as well yeah definitely uh, a lot of these players have you know a, some tournament results under their belt but some of these are newcomers on the scene, so who knows? We might have some explosive gameplay. It is still month one, Guilty Gear Strive, so we are all a little bit in our little growth growth phase right now. So mm -hmm. it, it should be super interesting. We're gonna see who we're gonna see who's gonna grow their pockets as well as we see who is gonna fight <laughs> oh. for the prize pot today. First place four hundred dollars, oh. second place three hundred, third place two hundred, and fourth with the hundred dollar prize. So you know everybody's gonna be wanting to get in that top half, the upper echelon of results here in this top eight. And yeah, you're gonna walk away with some bragging rights, some experience, and a little bit of change as well. So that's a good look. Yeah, thank you, PlayStation tournaments, because, you know, just providing these events for the community and, you know, providing some bucks, you know, that's, yeah. the, plenty of motivation for up and coming players on this uh, tournament uh, circuit here. So, you know, be on the lookout for more of these events so you can sign up. Exactly. And if you're looking to sign up, you can go to compete.playstation.com, right? That's where you're going to be able to get on the show and compete in all these tournaments that we got going on. We got stuff for Tekken 7, Street Fighter 5, as well as Mortal Kombat 11. The Evo warm-ups are going to be going on as well very soon. So there's all kinds of fighting game action and beyond, right? Even if you just don't want to compete in the tournaments, if you want to find out more about the competitive scene, that's where you go is compete.playstation.com. That is, as my man Ketchup put it, the one-stop shop for all things competitive PlayStation. So big ups to them as per usual. But now... It is time for Guilty Gear Strive. I want to see what match we're going to be starting with today. I believe it's going to be Magic Rider versus Raven, right? We got a little bit Ooh. of the intel on these players beforehand as well. And it looked like to me, if I recall correctly, Magic Rider is going to be playing that Ram Lethal. And, you know, you said it in, the, in our pre-show, right? Lethal character, it's in the <laughs> name, and it's got to be one you're afraid of. No, definitely. She has super solid normals, uh, super explosive damage. You even see her swords that she throws explode in the corner, get follow-up damage or setups. You know, the, the only thing you about this character, you want to fight her mid-screen. So, you know, if she can get you in the corner and get a hit, you're definitely going for a ride, folks. Most definitely, most definitely. He's going to be going up against Raven, I believe, as well was going to be on the Nagori Yuki. So, of course, we talked about how potent Ram Lethal's normals and range are, right? Nagori Yuki also True. has those strengths. He just needs to get leveled up in the blood gauge a little bit, and then he'll have normals that contend and even outrange Rams. But until then, he's got some he's got some dumb moves, you know what I mean? That 2148 just go <laughs> burr, fam. Like, I don't even know. Zero yeah. on block. He's got it cancelable as well into the DP that I'll delete your life bar. He can get out with the command backdash. Of course, you have to manage your blood gauge, but I mean, if you didn't have blood gauge to manage, he'd be staged <laughs> <laughs> boss let alone stage nine you know what i mean we've seen what nagori yuki without blood gauge consequences looks like if you played the arcade mode so we'll see how good he is at managing that meter that is the name of the game for the character but yeah man ramlethal we know very potent and looking at the yeah. surveys that the, we've talked to the players about my man magic riders alternate is soul so he is not playing around right he's <laughs> oh, picking no. ram or soul like, uh, yeah i'm not losing at the Came character select screen fam 
uh you know those are two characters that a lot of people have in their top fours top fives right now so you know this is a tournament you people are playing for that w but on the other end you know yuki's been working very the players have been working very hard the past couple weeks and that forward and crouch heavy so strong maybe if ram gets touched she might just explode like a pinata who knows yeah exactly that's six h bro the fact that he can do the two and four h the spin move and if it hits he just gets a six h otg like that is so right? powerful to manage no, the, so and the damage oh. and there's that spin from the beginning even nice. went for the launch i love it right and now he's already in level two blood gauge as well oh my goodness still just staying aggressive and gonna be able to take the ram to the corner drops the combo but checks it with a 2s you're not going nowhere Ooh. At least getting Raven to back off a bit here. That was getting out of the corner. Back but... dash. True. Trying to take him out, but yeah, we got the, the long range normals now, right? You can see the level three on the blood gauge. Ooh. Oh, missed that meaty and got thrown right out. Got to watch yeah, you, out. You got to be extra careful against Nagori Yuki with the meaties as well, because he has a longer throw range than normal characters, him and Potemkin. The run oh, yeah. grab, but no. That Abare just using that ambitious play there. Swinging with the life lead. Very smart. Yeah, exactly right. It's all about the risk reward management. Raven did a good job here. Oh my, and you can take all the risks oh. in the world right now with the specials because you got the bite off. As you can see, his blood gauge not increasing at all during that bite, just True. barely doing it now. Aye, right in there. Using the shadow blade. Oh, oh, oh. Those yeah, silhouettes, no. they be causing so much damage near the corner yeah i love this the anime with the wall break damage Woo! she is the most definitely smoked magic rider falling to raven in game one and this is what we talked about right if raven if nagori yuki can get going then he could outrange ram but it wasn't even that it was the fact that he was just kind of getting in her face with the 214 h and magic rider didn't have a good response right he couldn't find his time to take a turn yeah, on it, like, couldn't ride that magic, honestly. You had a couple <laughs> yeah. moments, but, like, you know, got thrown out of the meaty, got swung trying to take the opposition. Just, uh, you know, had had good ideas. This didn't mix it up correctly on uh, uh, his opponent's game plan. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Nagori Yuki, he just gets in your face, man. We, we've talked about it, right? The 214H <laughs> being zero on block. I think Ram's fastest button is a four frame. I'm not exactly sure, but then would lend you to believe that she could press buttons on the five frame Nagori Yuki, right? But because of his other options, because of the fact that he can cancel that 214H into other things, it makes you scared to swing. And just in general, a lot of the time when he does that spin move, you're left at a range where your light's not even going to reach, right? And then that kind of opens yeah. you up to getting counterpoked, and that's a scary thing to deal with as well. So, ooh, and I, we mentioned, right, the, the alternate Soul. is Soul Bad Guy. Tony Montana is coming into play. We'll see if Nagori Yuki is ready. <laughs> I mean, you said she might have a four frame. We, both of us aren't sure right now, but here's a three frame, even if that's not working, you know? <laughs> exactly, right? Let's go a frame the, faster. He couldn't get a read on uh, Nago's uh, wake up game. So maybe, you know, getting that read on his own wake up game will make Nago force respect, but not even getting there, just getting mauled in the corner. Yeah, right. You mentioned the Abari of Raven last time, willing to check with that 5P, and he's trying to do it on wake up, and he's just getting far assed. That's, that's how the game goes against Soul, baby. Oh, no, the true. Bandit Bringers now, too? Oh. Yeah, hold on. He can shut things down with 2H, but just as I say that, Night Raid Ooh, Vortex wow. shuts that down. And here's the magic we were waiting for. Riding with it. <laughs> he was just oh. in the tube there. Surf's up right now. Wait a minute, though. Raven trying to get his bearings a little bit. That was good DP, babe. But just as I say that once again, oh. tie turning. Yeah, Magic Rider just saddling up, going with it. But now finally running into some of these normals, getting obstructed through his game plan. Yeah, Raven threw out that 6P oh. right there. But now a 6H. Not actually going to combo off of it, though. No right Night Raid Vortex follow up. Here's the on counter hit. You can yeah. get one. That risk though, range. I'm I'm worried. In the corner I, here. Oh no. Is it all oh, the oh. sign was for help and automatic counter hit because of the exclamation point? He actually bursted it. It was Aaron as well. Still living for now, but for how long? He was trying to break that glass for a minute. Oh, are we gonna see a Opa? No, getting the kill before. Okay. Nice. What a response from Magic Rider. And using his alternate, bringing out the soul, right? And yeah, it looked like he just kind of got overwhelmed in that first match with uh, 
Ramlethal, right? He wanted some space that Nagori Yuki never really gave to him. So he, I think he expected more of a range game, more of a slow game against Raven. And that's what he expected him to bring to the table. But once he saw that he was willing to slug it out, he was like, all right, well, I'll pick Soul then. You know what I mean? If you want to go into the close quarters, I'll get the faster buttons. I'll get the far ass. I'll do things that excel at that type of game. And Raven, even on that last round, was adjusting towards the end, was getting a yeah. lot of normals out there to stop. But like we were talking about that that wrist jack up towards the, the third range of the corner and then got pushed to the corner. That decision making just went downhill and, you know, didn't even need a wall break, just exploded from the OTG damage. Yeah, exactly right. That one six S that got the, the counter hit, the full risk gauge did massive damage. And then he immediately bursted, which whiffed, right? So he yeah. did not get out of the corner whatsoever. And he was eating damage without a lot of wall hits, which is kind of bad because that means you just stay in the corner. You don't even get the reprieve of going back mid screen. Oh, and Raven's just fighting so hard right here. Still in the burst, getting all these counter hits and Holy the clash. Gosh. Wow. Oh my goodness. We are going Almost wild right out. now. Stop DP and Raven shutting it all down close to Ooh. a perfect. Finally gets a look yeah, of damage on him. Ooh, but the Ooh. PRC is slowing him down. Hits him with the fire frame. And just like that, Raven on set point. I again, the counter hit crouching slash and we're in the corner already. Ooh, missed the Ford H. Yeah, again, trying to oh, beat him to the punch on the night raid with the 204 H. Yo, spin the wind, break that glass. Opa, he stays spinning. Let's see the 100% tension on Raven. He's going to use 50 of it to YRC. Tries to backdash, but he eats it. That's why we're going to burst. Don't let Magic Rider start riding, fam. SDP from long distance. Night raid vortex into the pressure. Oh, no, you got nothing to get you out now. Oh, he eats it. Are oh, we going to see another YRC? He's holding He's true. He's holding back. strong. Oh, he's holding very strong here. You gotta hold all these forward S's. It's oh, a moving he finally wall. cracks. Once again, the night raid is the thing that buzzes him open. Let's go to a third no, round. Maybe a forward punch would work there, but when do you throw it? Yeah, exactly. Just uh, feels too intimidated to challenge at this point. Again, gun flame. When the gun flame gets canceled into that lane, you can jump out too, but he's not jumping anywhere right now. I... OTG, look, slightly mistimed on that charge. Does no, got wow. caught reaching. Gets the burst, but just as he gets wall splat, so he can't use it. Oh no, this is Raven's last opportunity. Ooh, the I am in there. Yo, and this is a good start. He gets oh, the fight as well. Oh, but he waited. He showed so much respect. Good burst, but Ryder still has one. YRC, not going to build any meter for six seconds. Has to make these moments count. Bruh. The projectile actually Ooh. nullifying the gun flame. Oh no, oh, he's going to pop a rage. rage. Oh. No! Unfortunate. Was coming back with the blood, but was just called oh, out. Dude, just slight oh, no. mismanagement on the blood gauge at the very end. I didn't notice that. I know he was pushing the limit. I know he did another projectile to nullify the gun flame. And that was the first time we saw him actually pop the blood gauge, right? He had been managing it so well the whole time. And in that clutch moment, <laughs> that clutch moment, he needed it to pursue his opponent. And it just cost him in the end. I mean, sometimes you got to go all in on something even your opponent isn't counting on. And, you know, it just backfired. So, you know, I, I don't blame Raven, but, you know, need, needs a little more elbow grease there. And that type of strategy needs mm -hmm. to, you know, come more a little more accustomed when the, the chips are on the table there. Yeah, and I said set point last game, but clearly I am very wrong. This is a three yeah, out of five wrong. bracket. So that is why nice. we're going more right back into it. Yeah, Magic Rider gonna have to seal another victory. And Raven has been looking better and better against the Soul as he's gotten some time against it. Nice Aye, what again. A yeah, he's been ready for that. Of course, Has upper body invincibility. Game. That's what I'm talking about. Woo. Yeah, we've seen that a couple of times from uh, Raven, right? He likes the YRC in response to the PRC on the Vortex. That's why Magic Rider challenging that with a DP. Hard knockdown from long distance. Night Raid Vortex, very punishable with no RC to make it safe. Nice. Tries for a 6H as well, but that gets sniped by the projectile. And that Shadow YRC clone. really worked out for him. Just mm -hmm. giving him that turn. Nice stand eight slash there. Wow. Yeah, exactly. We talked about how punishable that forward heavy slash is on Soul. True. So that's why I just use it. hard, but you, you can hit it hard and right back. And the blood gauge is building, but now cornered up. 
Raven oh. challenging at the very wrong moment, running into that forward slash, the fire oh, slash. The yeah, Raven backing off. Up. I respect that choice too, because a lot of these turnarounds has been Raven back to the corner. Just trying to get the gameplay here is more important than trying to play a perfect game on the, the corner. That was oh. so clean. The drift R RC forward on the Nairi Vortex able to chase him down. No burst actually not whiffed. Or excuse me, that is whiffed, but the two H is whiffed as well. Oh no, he's gonna pop again and he's not out of range to make him block. We got the burst to stay alive for now. Ooh. And he actually swings and take that last huge wow. chunk of life. <laughs> Tying it up, Raven, no fear. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I like he could have just waited and then been like, all right, I'm going to chip him out. There's no burst here anymore. But no, uh, try to just end it. I'm feeling that 2-1. Yeah, that is a it's a scary it's a scary thing to challenge when your opponent's in blood rage, right? You might feel it, especially as soul. Like you say, you saddle up, you want to play the cowboy style and just get in there. Like your my opponent yeah. is literally bleeding. The damage I already do is wild. I want to see the combo damage I could output, and I think he just saw a little bit too much red. Not to make the pun on the Nagori Yuki blood rage, but that's just kind of how it was. And he wanted to get in, but a lot of the time, the safest thing to do in that instance is just down back, right? He can't dash at you. His mobility is definitely very hindered, so. From that distance, you don't really have much to worry about besides the chip. And I don't know if he was just that worried about it, but obviously the one strike hit yeah. was going to be more than the chip output. Soul's tools are so solid. I wouldn't be surprised going with feeling in that type of situation. You know, if, you, exactly. if you're feeling it, it's like just play confident. Yeah, I'm pretty sure oh. you're 100% correct on why he did what he did there. Kept the aggression up, Ooh, and he's jumping. keeping the aggression up again. Yeah, Raven able to jump out. Ooh, and then stuff in the DP from long distance. I, I like these callouts. So spot on with these crouch heavies and just throws the super out. Just the get out of the corner, but full punish. Yeah, I was going to say, he just Maybe back into the corner. Yeah. Oh, no wall break. Unfortunate. And Magic Rider wasn't holding forward either off that wall spot. He could hold forward to tech and go back mid screen. However, he lets that opportunity yeah. pass him by and Raven now on set point. Yeah, when you tech off the wall, you're pretty much full in bull until you hit the ground. So you want to take advantage of that. Yeah. Nice check with the success. Oh my goodness. He was swinging for the fences. Yo, counter hit recovery, and then the burst with the Gid Clash with the big DP just went right back to it. My goodness, Magic Rider. Try to find any and all magic left in the Ooh. tank. Ooh, the back dash getting put to the NPR, seeing the burst. You're not out of this yet, my friend. The burst bait. Aye, there's that yellow. The wire sees the first one did not pay off, but the last two have been prime. And what a dust gets the momentum needed. Raven, Raven saving the charge dust for the set winning decision. It's like that we hadn't seen a dust from him all game, right? We saw a couple from uh, his opponent, Magic Rider, in combos, but nobody ever went for raw dust to open his opponent up. Raven sure. utilizing that at the very last second to catch his opponent off guard. That is fighting games right there. No, that was fighting games. He was on the ropes 2-1, literally brought it back, whether it was his opponent's mistake or, you know, a scramble or whatever, and just stayed determined and got what he needed to close that out. That was incredibly clutch. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed with Raven's play. And we talked about it, though, right? He got overwhelmed by the soul at the beginning, but we'll talk about that when we get to the replay. Right here, you see the first game just overwhelmed the Ramlethal. That forced Magic Rider to switch to the soul. And in the game following that, Magic Rider just overwhelmed the Nagori Yuki. But we saw Raven slowly make adjustments, right? Magic Rider was able to take this game, but not for free. Raven did a great job and really made it a tough win for Magic Rider to put that second W on the board. And just with more data came more information for Raven to capture lies on and we saw that in games three and games four or excuse me games four and games five true that like magic rider had the the right choice going the soul but I, I feel it just came down to just certain decision making towards the end of rounds you know mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times he would set the pace but you know it's all about it's not about how you start as well it's how you close also sometimes you can't be given those handoffs yeah, and that charge dust is a great closer. I mean, it feels like any character you play can get at least like a 60% combo off of it. And you can see our right. updated bracket now as Raven moves on 
to the winner's semifinals. The upper bracket semis as Magic Rider drops down to the lower bracket to await some of the other people that fall to the winners of our first round matchups. Of course, next up is going to be Golga versus Retro Mixup. After that, it'll be Popotino and Rolo, and then Zed and Acker all. Either way, it's going to be fire all the way through the bracket. So, tons of fire. Especially considering how many of these players have results already. Like, I am excited. Yeah, exactly. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you all for joining us once again here on Twitch.tv slash PlayStation. Our next match is going to be Goga starting it off. And he is going to be playing the Chip Zanif. And we saw, if you watched the 10v10 yesterday, you saw how dangerous these Chip players are. Very yes. popular in Japan right now. You got the players that like of Kazunoko, Goichi, Sumito, legendary fighting game players. All playing Chip right now and for good reason. Definitely, uh, you know, he, he is a glass cannon, but cannon should be capitalized there. <laughs> he has yeah. all the tools. He just uh, happens to explode. And speaking of other cannons, we got Retro Mix up here with the soul rep in uh, London here. Uh, sees Retro Mix up got second place at ICFC preseason, and uh, it was Ooh. their third tournament. So, you know, Bruh. we got some talent on the table. Dude, this that reminds me. Yeah, and retro mix up. I'll tell you what, the ICFC Europe finals was a soul mirror and it was wild. One of the best sets actually that I've seen take place in Guilty Gear Strive already. So this man is one of those people that was in the grand finals, his third tournament overall, by the way. So if he was one of those people, I think you mentioned that in those grand finals, which he was, you got something to look forward to here. And you mentioned the glass sure. on chip. Like, this guy has the combos that are going to make him bleed. The Volcanic Viper clean hit stuff. So Chip can never be put on the back foot if he yeah. wants to get the W. And, and that's kind of so, the balance with Chip, right? Is that, like, definitely. when you watch Chip matches, you see the opponent and you're like, man, poor whoever he's playing against, right? Because he's just doing Alpha Blade and Command grabbing you and going all over the place. But as soon as he, get hit, as soon as he gets hit, it turns to poor Chip, right? Because he just gets deleted. He's always been like this, though. Mm -hmm. And to be fair... It seems oh. like the damage is more in his favor because everyone takes more damage overall. But True. as I see that, he's already taken 70% in 18 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, now he's gonna try. What comes with that is all the tools. This character is literally like the, the Akuma of Guilty Gear. <laughs> as long as you're solid and you know how to knock someone down, they have to guess. Ooh, and then the six slash gonna get the counter hit. He tried to PRC to pick up that combo, but such a funky hit. He couldn't quite find it. Oh. Yeah, Goga, I was going to say. It's really interesting. Uh, I think both characters have a lot for each other. Like, Chip can keep Soul on his toes with all his normals, his movement, everything. But the explosiveness of Soul and having a three frame of a reversal, a command grab, if he gets Chip once, it, he only needs a couple. Exactly, right? So. We'll see if Goga can start finding some hits. Retro mix up, found another far S, gonna take the burst oh. because he knows he'll die if the combo is correct. Counter hit on the 2D after dropping. Another drop into a command throw, I right. right. Opportunities That's everywhere. That's punish, right? Oh, it might have been. I honestly didn't notice. No. Aye, very nice. Ooh, Ooh, got the hit. It looks like he tried to get it preemptively. Yeah, that was definitely a, a weird pickup. Nice going into the super as he notices the wall splat. Get as much damage as possible. Still surviving through the wall break, but he'll have plus frames. Right? A little hope from his friends, but not enough. Get that forward kick, though. Overhead. And man, when you are just on tilt, no health against Chip, you are just guessing on defense constantly. What a sweep there. Yeah, again. Oh, and he gets the air grab as well. Continuing the momentum. Alpha Blade cross up. Then checking up. Alpha Blade cross up. Ooh, nice wait down. out by Chip. I like how he just didn't try to overcommit because he was just guessing right. What an overhead. Ooh, and yeah, that's definitely a problem for Chip some of the time, right? Is the overzealousness. And that was good stuff from yes. Goga to switch it up. Get the kill as he showed oh. the exact patience he needed. Retro mix up falling into the corner and takes full advantage of it with the perfect. That was really good. That's a great way to describe it. Overzealous, like sometimes with Chip, you're in their face the whole time. Counter hit 2D working, counter hit slash works. You get the air grab. You go for one more and then Sashime! You get blown up. You gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You gotta be careful. 
And we, we saw, right, in that very first round, Chip, he got hit by one combo, and he was already, like, on life support. But after that, <laughs> didn't really get hit, right? Like, in the second and third rounds, mm, didn't really have to worry about that that much. And because of no. that, we see the power of Chip. It's very hard to contain this character. It's very hard <laughs> to just make sure he stays on the ground for a little bit. But that's why he takes so much damage when he does get hit. You can see the kind of uh, no. the balance that the character strikes. Just me give, trying to give that chip synopsis, synopsis in the first 15 seconds. He took 70% health and still won the set, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. woo, you're on a roller coaster ride both sides of the matchup when you fight chip. Yeah, but we'll see if my man Richard makes run up. under. See if he can bounce back here. Oh, he actually juggled with that 5k too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the headbutt. Oh yeah, that's a really potent tool. Both of these characters actually have it as well. The jump K, they have great horizontal jump Ks. So you see it a couple of times when they know their opponent is very uh, willing to go into the air. They'll beat them there to it yeah. with that button. Nice DP punish as well. And when you're near the corner, they both have awesome carry. Mm-hmm. And that jump 2K, I mean, we haven't really talked about it yet. The, the mountain drill kick, it is a plus on block. It's just one of the most annoying tools in the game to deal with. Mm -hmm. And Retro falling to the 5K again, just trying to find some type of hit on chip, right? You saw the 6S. I think that's a good idea. The Fire Slash takes up a lot of the screen space, but still chip is just too fast. Yeah, as long as chip's just mixing his tools up, he has an answer for a lot of these uh, obstructing tools that Soul's throwing out here. But the stand Ooh. slash gets a turn. Almost was able to equalize it. Yeah, exactly. That's why we see Gogo with the immediate burst, right? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Counter hit confirmed with the Night Raid Vortex as well, but dropping the combo a little bit prematurely. Oh, no. And I felt like when he got hit, he was actually looking with that forward H. It was just the forward movement of that slash. Yeah, now he's going to have the guess for game. Oh, the raw one mix up. Able to keep him in the corner. Retro. Betting it on the burst. He needs to at this point. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh. oh. Yeah, the Safe CK actually get around. recovered. So he went with the heavy slash DP right there, right? And has a little bit more, uh, I don't know exactly, because I believe they're both seven frame startup, but I, I, I'm not really sure. It looked too slow right there. And I feel like the SDP would have worked. Maybe just a little more oomph. Maybe they wanted to send a message and go to Fast RC and be like, I'm going to win if this hits. Like, I have no idea. Because I know if you get the counter hit heavy uh, DP, you can dash RC, Fast RC, and just do heavy, oh, no, heavy no, 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 and do no, it okay. again. And on so, ship, yeah, yeah. that'll do like 80 right there. So maybe so, it was just trying to bank it on a, a, a Grand Slam or something. Just yeah, so the heavy, slash D, the heavy slash DP is 13 frame startup, while the slash DP oh. is 7 frames. So yeah, so, the so slash would have probably hit. Yeah, yeah. It looked like that. The 6K recovered because of those 6 extra frames of startup. I'm pretty sure the slash DP would have hit. Ooh. But yeah, Did as you, you mentioned, right, he wanted the big damage on chip. If you get that, that's like clean hit and you're right back in the game. Maybe it was like a throw read, or maybe thought maybe that works against stand slash, but not stand kick. I would assume. Yeah. And we're gonna burst out here, Goga. Again, we've seen it time and time again. Oh. Pretty much any time he gets clipped by his soul, he's gonna immediately burst out. Oh, and he's still safe with the run through, but that throw, the RC, okay. Retro. Yeah, no escape here. Oh, except for the Abare again, the stand kick. I would have trade. Yeah, wow, the Night Raid on the Alpha Blade. I wonder if he tried to DP and just found Night Raid as the cross-up, but either way, got Goga reaching Ugh. and Retro Mix-Up star in his teaching. Now he's not falling for those uh, approaches at the start. I like the back-offs from Retro, taking it serious. Mm-hmm. See, the FD jump back. Guilty Gear player habits. Oh! Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> the PRC Ooh, tried with the slow down. down. Yeah, I think it was I like it... waiting for that burst a bit and then just like committed. You're right, 100. percent Alpha blade again, but no, he just runs into the far as Golga does have his burst back available. But oh. yeah, on the RC, tries to bait it out again. That's why you just see the jump. Oh, bandit Ranga. They're definitely playing like veterans with the burst baits here. <laughs> oh yeah, they definitely look like they've both been playing Guilty Gear for quite some time. They both look very comfortable. Retro mix up now. Oh. oh! <laughs> Just enough. <laughs> that Scratches was... the head. Cool, calm, and collected with that shrew good bro. That was so sick. A little hot out. Gave him a haircut with that. <laughs> yeah, bro. Trim that out. We're in a Neo Times Square, fam. Get you a new look. Ooh. 
Now go over here. Oh, we'll see if the luck turns around with a black hat in the background. Oh, not going to happen, actually. Ugh. First, go got 100% tension as well. This is going to be real rough. Yeah, blue RC. Do we got the wall run stuff? Not quite because of the way it hit, but he gets the wall splat into the super either way. Oh, no. This isn't looking good for Retro. Alpha Blade cross up. He just needs one more. Got to go all in. Oh, oh he my went all God. in on the other side. Double dip it on the Dragon Punch. I like it. I really like it the right confidence. there too, specifically because when you block the DP in the air, there's more blocks done, right? It's not really easy to punish DPs if you actually block them in the air like that. So he just landed at point blank and took advantage of the extra blocks done with one more DP, right? He's like, I'm just, just yeah. gonna do it again. <laughs> He's like, yeah, meter. It would have clashed at worst, yeah. most likely. Like yeah. in prime positioning. Yeah, that was very smart for sure from our chip player, Goga, who's going to be moving on in the bracket. You can see, I mean, we, we talked about the overwhelming offensive chip, and that's pretty much what we saw in this bracket. Retro mix up, no slouch. It definitely looked good on the soul. When he got the hits, he inverted most of the time, but a couple of clutch drops. And I just think the uh, the tilt, the mental stack that chip kind of puts on you is just overwhelming. Oh, definitely so much. He's always keeping you second guessing. Like you, all you're thinking about is like, if I get this one crucial counter hit, I can turn the whole match around and then you're tunnel visioning the whole match up to where chip can do whatever he wants so you you have to be crafty and smart in this type of matchup but at the same time you have to mix it up enough to keep chips second guess guessing that zealotness that we brought up earlier yeah exactly right i think that is definitely step one in fighting chips is finding some way to shut down their over aggression i still love that shuriken right there yeah. just a fade away oh so good Mamba style shuriken right there, and then we just had the mix of Alpha Blade. It needed one more Alpha. here, and there it is, right? It was like, ugh. You could see Retro Mix Up even stood still on the block right there when he landed because he was pressing something, but it was too early. He was still stuck in block stun. So whatever he was mm. pressing didn't come out. That's why he was just standing still, not even blocking. Uh, that was definitely what happened. Unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah, so good stuff from Goga, though, being aware of the extra block stun that happens to opponents when they block something in air. So 3-0 over Retro Mixup. We're going to get 3-2 to Raven over Magic Rider. So they'll be facing each other in the winner's semis. But we got to get to the other half of winner's semis as well as we continue along with Popotino and Rolo 1991. Should be good. Should indeed. be good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And once again, everyone, you can see Popotino going to be coming in. Bobotino also, I believe, uh, well, I can't remember what tournament he did. Maybe he said in the survey, but he's already it's a winner rumble. very well. Yeah, 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 there you go. There you Second go. Second yes. place at Winter Rumble. It's a, a Russian international major. Let me see here. That was Popatino. Uh, this is, a, I believe, his has the Brussels Challenge. But I'm talking about specifically in Guilty Gear Strive. He's already done something that I cannot remember. But Rolo also going to be rocking the maze. So again, we're going to be having these uh, these characters that we're yeah. used to seeing nice and early, right? We've seen May do plenty of damage in tournament already. Tempest NYC taking the Cloud series yesterday, or excuse me, on Friday. So. We've seen the dangers of May. Of course, on the other side, Pobble T is going to be rocking the bad guy, Tony Montana, again, even though falling in our last match, still going to be looking to make his presence felt here going forward. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what Rolo has. Uh, it says on the information here that plenty of top threes. So, you know, they're, they're definitely going to have something in their arsenal with a character like May. And even then, her, uh, her set uh, game plan very relentless is you got to be very on point to deal with her type of pressure so it should be interesting yeah and uh, i just had a long set with a very strong japanese may so oh. i'm really interested to see if there's any beach ball rc mix-ups because i ate like everyone <laughs> oh okay yeah may and that's the thing about a lot of these characters right they haven't even been cracked open to the point of looking super dangerous right they're just especially may <laughs> yeah. right now is thriving on her like normals right her jump h and the totsugeki yeah. stuff like that like a lot of the fact that people aren't ready with the optimal decision making off those like rock paper scissors situations and then once we get past that layer and she's going to be able to do these rc mix-ups with like the totsugekis and the beach balls then she's going to be a whole different bag of problems but also mother base informing that Popotino was part of the fgc arcade that's right for strive and really showed oh. out with soul bad guys so yeah this man is one to look out for nice Let's and go. early oh yeah yeah man already in the corner we're wow, gonna burst out Ro <laughs> yeah rollo air throw he's having the some Popotino faith that he'll be red. able to bring this round back but i i don't have that same faith Aye. fam <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, we were saying it was hard to navigate this neutral from May. 
You know, we all the memes about May isn't about her combos and her mix-ups. It's about Totsugeki and a big anchor, you know? Yeah, exactly. And Bocatino was doing a good job of, you know, putting that stop sign up. Yeah, Ooh, and that six heavy slash it will definitely be uh, one of the tools to do so in the matchup. It's kind of unorthodox as a neutral tool, I think, in a lot of uh, different matchups. But this one, I could see it being uh, used, used well. In the corner Ooh, again, the headbutt. Oh. YRC so blocked. Classic. He could have punished. Oh, no. YRC negative 16 on block and counter hit recovery. Oh. oh. I know Rolo's hyped that at least punished the slash uppercut, but was, wasn't was enough. Gets cleaned up by the RC gun flame. Whew. Those Man. slash uppercuts are so fast, too. It reminds me of old school Ken. You know, he just hits the ground and he's safe. You know, so... He, the fact that he used those two crouch punch, I, I didn't blame it. I was like, yo, just get anything right now. Bro, I feel like they just cut away from us like 10 seconds ago. And we're already back on camera <laughs> because that's just how Guilty Gear Strive goes sometimes. My man got deleted sure. by the soul. Right? We saw in the very first round, Rolo betted on the burst towards the end. Like right when he got in guts range. And then he just kind of insta died. And when that happens, you're not going to build burst back in the second round sometimes. And you see just kind of overwhelmed. Really never found a way out on Popatino's offense. We'll see if he could yeah. kind of stem the bleeding a bit going forward. But yeah, I mean, the aggression is going to come out hot and fast. This is not only the type of character, but the type of player Popotino is as well. He likes to put the pedal to the floor. Yeah, that ambitious uh, neutral here has been just taking so many turns. And Rolo was able to stop some of it, but, uh, you know, it wasn't enough to not get a two-rounder. Yeah, this boy. Oh, yeah, see, again, trying to challenge with that forward Ooh. heavy slash. 5k always at the ready as well. Oh. Bandit Bringer catching the back dash. Oh no! And this is just a mulling. Wow, went for the burst beat. I respect that. He did. He looked like he had the um the punish on deck as well. Like he'd be able to dodge it and then still get the uh, launch combo off. And they might have experience versus each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Might have been like, oh, Rolo usually bursts first after a game one, you know? You never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, with this game's netcode, it's, uh, people are playing everywhere and everybody at any time, right? So it'd be no surprise if these no, guys have played quite some quite some games. I, I would imagine. If I get salty and you'll play me 20 games, I'm down, you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to be able to wall splat nice and combo. kill. Oh, yeah, I love the jump punch, right? He's like, ah, I just need one bit of damage. No need just for an optimal ending. ender. Oh, we have in that spacing. We see the beach ball it's starting so, to come out here. It's just hard for Rolo to really find a, like, a comfortable spacing here. Like they're backing off but at the same time trying to bet IED on Fireball. It's kind of risky. Oh. Yeah. And the wrists are not paying off right now. A man, a wall splat again. Double up on the five. Heavy slash. Gonna send it through the wall. Now what we're doing. Oh, the Totsu. Oh. I like the bet on the slide there, but you know, it's just out of range. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when all this mid neutral has been bullying these past two games. You yeah. know, I want to see more of that 3K applied, like not right away, but like, you know, trying to get them to at least stop. Yeah, I like that idea a lot, especially because Popotino has like that forward heavy slash, that big, oh, just stab into the ground that Soul can do. I think in that range, since he's looking to play for that, that 3K is a very smart idea. And Popotino has been ready with the forward punches, right? That upper body invul, we've talked about it already. One of your primary anti-airs for pretty much any character in the game. And it is it is imperative that you use that normal against May. Like yeah. she has like the disjointed hitboxes on the anchors. And the only thing that's going to save you is the fact that your upper body is in full from stuff like that. So we can see Popotino is very ready with the six P's. He's brought them out multiple times already. And yeah, I think the three K is definitely going to be part of that slide that May can do part of the answer of the adjustment that needs to be made. It just needs to mix it up enough. So, you know, it is not going to be what's going to finish this matchup, but it's going to be what can at least stop Popatino from this immaculate neutral that's just been dictating this game. Yeah, it's been all Popatino all the time. Really has been playing a bully style of soul and Rolo just can't get him off. Yeah, one of the most efficient ways, I think, to play soul. Oh, yeah, 100%, oh, right? <laughs> I mean, if you're going to have all those frames and hitboxes, you might as well take extra turns to make your opponent play your game. Yeah, and then oh, Very nice and then he has the DP as well, a, a turn stealer. It's just like, yeah, this character is very hard to deal with. A headbutt, 
just backs off. I... The blue RC did apply some slow, but he's like, this S Volcanic Viper will still be fast enough. Yeah, even if there was an air block, would have had to take a mix up on landing. Mm hmm. Why not? Ooh, he tried to stuff the beach ball, Ooh. but nah. As, and as soon as Rolo gets any offense, right, we see the burst out, the 6P to stuff the air attempt. We see Totsugeki again checking, right? It was an S Dolphin that's negative five on block, so he just checks afterwards. Dust combo, very nice. Leaves him at the wall, tries to bait something out, but doesn't give it to him. Switch sides, let's go. Gonna bounce him off the wall now. Oh, the Totsugeki oh. missed, but the jump K hits. Keep it simple. Oh, but that 6H, the forward slash, wow. Oh, the burst bait whips on the forward momentum. Rolo scrambling in the omelet up. Oh, wow. Gotta make something of this. Oh, it tastes good. Good job. Yeah, and he's gonna get a second plate that he did not deserve right there because Pobotino baited the burst, but as you mentioned, the forward momentum took him past the point of punish. Yeah. But when you're hungry, you're hungry. You'll take what you can get. And Rolo is in this third round here. Oh, tries to drop the anchor on him now, switching up the switching up the timings a little bit. You can see how far that jump heavy slash goes. Beach ball trade, so still no Rolo is scrambling to a victory right now. Yeah, he is a playing that that slugfest game that is looking good. Yeah, I think Rolo just doesn't care anymore at this point. Like, yo, I got my turn. They're kind of taking it back on what I'm doing. I'm gonna just run with this. Yeah, it definitely looked like in that last round, Popo Tino kind of got overwhelmed by just the scrambles. And I really like Rolo not kind of trying to implement the game plan that he had already been going with. Like you said, kind of embracing that, right? He's like, okay, look, yeah. it seems like Popo Tino is kind of not pressing the right buttons at the right time. He doesn't have my rhythm right now. So I'm just going to keep Totsugeki, the anchors, just kind of wear him down with these small hits, not look for anything big. And that was a smart adjustment to make. Yeah, I, I feel like Polo was riding the bull the whole game. And then at one point was like, hey, I'm a bull too. Like, you got <laughs> yeah. to ride me now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get, get stepped on for a little bit. There's a lot of normals that like, we talked about souls, right? Of course, the far S, the six heavy, or the six slash and the six heavy slash. We've seen come out a lot from Popotino, but May has plenty as well, right? Her anchor normals no, are true. definitely super good. We've talked about the jump heavy slash, but her grounded normals are good too. Her far slash, her two heavy slash, her crouching anchor is a massive Massive damage starter. So, like, yeah, it's definitely something to uh, look out for on the ground as well if Rolo can keep it going. 6P again, though. Yeah. He tried to cancel it into Bandit Revolver right there, but because it went from forward to quarter circle forward, he got the DP input. Very common execution error. I'm excited to see this Popatino adjustment. Very nice forward slash. Because when you let go of that mental stack on the game winning round sometimes, some people, you know, that's a lie. They, they, it starts making their mind rush a little more than it should. Yeah, exactly. You got to keep the composure together. Oh, my goodness. Yes. The Night Raid Vortex going to compose Rolo into this corner. Oh, oh. his counter hit. Yeah. Tried to make something happen, but was not Rolo's turn there. Mm -hmm. And Pobotino looking to seal this after letting the game slip from his grasp. But command throw after the counter hit Dolphin. Thanks. Woo. Stole the corner, but ran right into it. Has to be careful here. Nice. Finally gets the instant air dash on a fireball, oh. but the swing back. I have no idea how that hit, but it oh. hurt. <laughs> yeah, even and on the dust. Hit, he was like, I'm going to press the far <laughs> S, the dust. He sees that he committed to the combo this time, so he burst, but now you got to commit to this corner. It looks like you're putting a ring oh. on this one. You like it a little too much, fam. Oh, no, oh. the throw on top of it. What are we doing next? Bandit bringer to keep him locked down. Are you going to escape? I don't think so. The RC is there in case so he wants either. to do it. But yeah, he just catches them trying to finally wiggle out. The forward slash is a great, or excuse me, the forward slash is a great frame trap tool. And it looked like he either caught a jump or a button press. Either way, Pobotino going to be moving on. Yeah, Polo had a little too, too many super jumps to try to get out of the quarter there. But it was already a little too late in that situation. But uh, hopefully Polo can turn it around in the, the losers. I mean, yeah, Rolo. Most definitely. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. He's going to have another chance at the lower bracket. As you mentioned, this is a double elimination, top eight, three out of five. So we're going to have him get another chance. But for now, we're taking a look at the highlights here. Popotino just running rampant with the soul. We talked about it. The gun flame faint right there. Caught him a wiggling at the worst possible time, right? You don't want to flinch on the gun flame faints unless you're going to be real quick about it. Mm-hmm. 
And then this time just kind of just carried into the wall, headbutt. Yeah, right. We saw the BRC perfectly I like that. waiting it out. Yeah. And the RC to take him to the corner here. That's what he blocked the burst, but just kind of missed it, that punish because of the dash forward momentum. And that allowed Rolo to get the kill here. And he actually executed on this next round as well for the full W. But Pobotino just was able to take him to the wall again. And we talked about it, right? He had been committing to that yeah. corner like no other. My man had an anniversary with that joint. Yeah, I mean, he tried to take the opportunity and ran right into it. And that was kind of, you know... Sign, sign the contract right there on that last game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, you can see the way our bracket is broken down, right? We got Raven and Goga in one half of the upper bracket semifinals. Popotino will be awaiting the winner of Zed and Akarol, while Retro Mixup and Magic Rider will battle against each other, and we'll find out who Rolo faces once we find out who falls in this next matchup. Yeah, so this has been a great set of matches already so far. I mean, I just love watching some Guilty Gear Strive, man. And we're going to keep it rolling right now with Zed rocking the Kai, right? We've seen uh, Kai, I think, is a, is a little bit of, um, I don't know how to put it, but I feel like he's pretty split right now on in terms of opinion on the character. I think a lot of people think he kind of struggles. and I think a lot of people think he's good. I think he's solid character. If you have strong uh, fundamentals or footsies or ground game, this character is a lot of tech traps, which is like staggered mm -hmm. normals to get a counter hit out of people, baiting the throw and a lot of walk back, walk forward, you know? So, you know, the people that can apply that, do that. Asherol with the Leo though, this character was kind of jank and exer, but got nothing but buffs. This is a character that like <laughs> lost 6-4 before to every character, but could win on just the most explosive situations. And those situations got even more safer in this game. So, you know, this character super strong pick right now. A lot of people like are saying top five pick. Kai actually used to beat Leo, and I haven't seen this matchup mm. enough through both of their changes. So it'd be interesting. I'm actually interested to see how this is going to turn out. Like, Leo is in my personal top five right now, of course. But the, like you mentioned, right, they were still in month one of Guilty Gear Strive. My top five could look idiotic in another month, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll see how the everything progresses. But yeah, you mentioned uh, Leo in this game. When I first saw how Strive was developing and the type of game it was, I was like, Leo has to be in this game, right? Because he was basically this type of character in Guilty <laughs> yeah. Gear Exert. Like, he uh, no, already 100%. did all the things, yeah, that these characters in Strive like to do. And then added on top of that, his uh, back turn stance is OD. Oh, man like dealing with that once you get knocked down is so hard the overhead is 18 frames very difficult to react to and they gave him a command grab i know it's slow but the startup is a little deceiving and with all the options you have to deal with already you can get caught slipping trust me it, i think it's a little selfish but uh i thought he was going to be in the game just because he had some of the most hype extra tournament moments just with True. back supers and back turns mm -hmm. i hated losing to this character but i love <laughs> watching him play I tell you what, I love when he parries other people's supers, or excuse me, yeah, parries yes, other exactly. people's bursts and supers, but not mine, you know? <laughs> but the, the quality of life that he's got in this, like his stand slash has a really good hitbox compared to the hurt box. Like it does have a hurt box, but uh, solid compared to a lot of cast. And his slash fireball buff is incredibly solid. Yeah, I've seen Akerol everywhere already in the EU Strive scene. He also, yeah. oh, I was, I'll get to that in a minute. Ride the lightning. Oh, Actually, the trade, trades though. with the fireball, bro. The projectiles on that, Leo are all some is. nonsense, bro. I don't even know what to say. Wolverine Guile. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm telling Wolverine you. Wolverine Guile. I, I don't I even know, bro. His fireballs in this game, in my opinion, S fireball, best projectile in the game. Obviously, H fireball, very slow, very high durability. Oh, and great when you can apply pressure behind it. Oh, and the back turn stance already on it with the dunk huge damage you really have to scout that and that is a brand new move if you're not ready yeah. in the last three weeks you might be getting dunked looking for a left right oh and, and then speaking of the left right he just crept with the normal dash not even with the the cross up record man yeah right he didn't even go with the berserker slash legit just crossing right through his body using the body hop abilities of the back turn dash and i mean the back turn stance is lethal in this game yo we talked about the command grab and it's slow starter but you can get caught slipping especially when the leo is very good at applying it in certain areas right like after the guard break on your wake up there are certain situations where you're really not thinking about it and then you just get liger bombed yeah, no, you, you're literally in uh, Leo's game at that time. You're in the frame advantage, and you're like, oh, I'm trying to get out, and that's when Leo throws double low with the kick. Or then you're trying to scout a throw or a backdash, and you get crossed up or record straight in front. 
There's a lot of different op or he just throws fireball because he knows you're crafty about every situation. Like who knows? Yeah, exactly right. And that's a, I think that's one of the other quality of life changes that Leo had is just how potent that projectile is. Like it doesn't have it doesn't force him to go in now. The fact that he could just sit on the other side of the screen and annoy you with these projectiles, it really forces you to switch up some rhythm as well. And a great backdash right yeah. there. What a wow. throw. The yeah, reaction from Zed. He's like, not abandoning the, the throws, though. right? Like I was saying with that slash fireball, it even beat Zed's super with that perfect yeah. reaction game one. You know, you got to be careful. I couldn't believe it. I was like, all right, well, at least he'll go through that. And yeah, the trade Ooh, threw Ooh. him out of the, the nice. pillar. I like the conversion. Leo oh is God. heavy class, though. You, you have to know your combos on him. Mm -hmm. He's going to get the plus frames here. What's it going to be? What guess? Oh, oh of course. Oh, wow. The latest burst I've ever seen. Good stuff from Zed. Right? Staying disciplined. But no, he doesn't FD the fireball. So he gets chipped out. Woo. Zed fighting here, but not enough. Oh. Roll. The air to oh, air. The toss again. Bro, lagger bombed here. Overhead city breaking oh. the wall afterwards. He's going to have 50% tension and the tension gain is going to be here. You are in big trouble, Zed. Yeah, the positive meter situation. He confirms the super optimal, but that, that was a block string. Could have went to any special and would have still been gaining meter post RC. Frightening situation. Yeah, he didn't even have to go to the super that quickly because it wasn't like Zed had burst, right? Usually when you see yeah. players that are on Kizzy K on Kai going to super that quickly, usually it's yeah. to prevent people from going into a burst. But it looked like Akerol was like, shout outs to Kizzy, a, a fellow Kai player. Well, I guess I'm doing your fellow Kai player dirty with that one, kind of just using his best Kai impression with the immediate confirming a super. <laughs> I mean, we did see some shades of Kizzy from Zed on that game one. But the reaction at that range was just not good for the fireball. But uh, wow, like Akrol, the explosive lay of gameplay and just playing solid. Like, I, I don't feel like he's too going out of bounds, but he's going out of bounds enough to keep his opponent guessing constantly. And so yeah. that's how these throws are working is because, you know, the mental stack like we talk about. You have four options on your mind and you're really trying to react to two and the, the third or fourth one gets you. It's, it's hard. Yeah, exactly. The the farther something is away from your mind, the harder it is to react to usually, right? And that's kind of what we've been seeing so far in this set. And Akerol, of course, looking to close it out. Akerol as well, I want to give a shout out to because he's not only been playing in a bunch of EU tournaments, but he's been running a few as well. I believe ran one of the oh, wanted nice. qualifiers over on Damascus's style of things. So yeah, big ups to him up holding it down. Yeah, shout out to the TOs. Shout out to Damascus as well. Mm -hmm. We're both ex-New Yorkers. <laughs> oh, they, Ooh, I forgot about Damascus' thin in East Coast. But that is how you we punish supers, the right? The charge does. That is optimal. Ooh, counter. Very nice. And the pressure Ooh. here gets the cross up. Bro, just overwhelming him, showing him all kinds of things, even waiting for the TP. Oh. Now waiting for the ride, the lightning. Oh, he wasn't waiting for it. Oh, Excuse it me. Did. Wow, I thought he was waiting post forward kick, but I guess not. <laughs> yeah, he'd already it's committed to an option. Oh, Aye, what a counter hit. That was so the hit confirms from Zed. He's turning it up here. He yeah, trying to stay alive. Was the shock state on him early? Oh, that's plus four. Yeah. No, yep. and the run up forward punches. I like that. Trying to make this more mid low centric to keep Leo second guessing. Ooh, Berserker slash Aye. Adam. Interesting stuff. Flash kick right after the plus frames on the fireball challenges his turn. Good block and the Ooh. super. What reaction? Yeah, speaking of challenging the turn right there, Zed gonna blow through the pillar. Gonna get the plus frames as well. Oh no! It looked mm. like he even waited for the back dash. Ooh, throw? Still gets the throw in the end anyway. No fear in that OTG damage. Wow, yeah. I, the air splits. I didn't know they're that powerful. I gotta gotta get my flexibility up. That's what I'm saying. Who what yoga regimen is Kai on, bro? How did that uh, the flip kick but, OTG do that much damage on Guts Leo? Wow. Them watching some JCVD and DDP videos on <laughs> yeah. YouTube, I guess. Like, man. Got that, that three hour. Thing. That three-hour RVD <laughs> stretch routine before the match, you know what I mean? Just make sure we're nice and limber. Uh, Kai, Kai is definitely one of those. <laughs> yeah. 
two that was one. good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff from uh, our Kai player. Not going out without a fight, right? I mean, he is definitely a Zed. It's definitely a Kai Kisuke main. I see the all. He says none. His Even his PSN is kind of a little Kai Kisuke themed. And he did get second place at Exit Rev 2 Winter Rumble 2019. So he is definitely oh, a Guilty Gear player, yeah, through and through. Oh, nice trip up. And you mentioned, right, you got to get used to the new move, like the command throw we saw. So he played oh. plenty of Rev 2, so he knows this character. And that can work against you sometimes, right? We've seen some of the Guilty Gear veterans talk about how the, the old Guilty Gear legacy skills can work against you in this game in certain ways. True. Yeah, just watching last night, I'd see Tomo throw throw out when he wouldn't want to, you know? Just because mm -hmm. of uh, intuition, you know? Exactly. In certain matchups. Nice challenge. The 2S actually beating Kai's 2S out right there. Oh, nice. What a counter hit. Yeah, the 2D. But now, again, nice Akron is playing at perfect spacing. Great conversion. The just guard enough. right through the wall. <laughs> okay, possible set point for Achiral. Zed just running right in. That 6P a little too early. Oh, the whiff. Committed to the vapor thrust right there. Unfortunate. Oh, no. Yeah, you're going to oh, be throwing no. fireballs that close. My man Kai's frame data is not good on that. And now with going to be in positive meter situation, Leo is just going to be gaining. See that? Any hit confirm, any mix can just yeah. spend it here. Exactly. Even if he RCs here, it nullifies the oh, meter. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful that RC nice. drift down into the Berserker slash cross up. Yeah. Like, you can see uh, Akaral has been really good at using the RC Drifts, not just for combos, but for, like, positioning and neutral yeah. uh, decisions after the fact, right? That was really good. Hey, he, he went, Zed went for that air fireball, and that dash RC just went right under. And then he was just like, hey, just in case this doesn't hit and they land, I'm across up. Why not? You know, yeah, exactly. Nice. A counter hit recovery all the way down on the air fireballs from Kai, right? So if you can tag him before he lands, that is definitely the ideal scenario to do so. As we can see the way Akerol pretty much just had an ideal uh, winner's bracket run. At least in the round one, I should say. Yeah, that was a, such a oh. tragic moment, bro. Heartbreaker. Oh. <laughs> that one hurts. <laughs> I'm not even playing Kai in this game. It hurts. Oh. Yeah, and it looked like right there he used the Drift RC up to, like, make the burst harder to do. But that was a, such a good disciplined burst from Zed. Just got caught not FDing on the fireball, unfortunately. And then, yeah, you you mentioned, right, oh, the uh, super, the super confirm real quick. And then Zed was able to bounce back in this game. We saw it here. Throwing out the Berserker throw. Slash. Yeah, he'd have been pretty solid with that. Oh, that throw away. A little preemptive. Bouncing him off the wall. I love the Leo corner combos, the wall bounce joints. Yeah. And I like how, you know, not every Leo does the same combo off it. Some some break the wall, some let you drop for that hard knockdown in the corner. Pretty cool. Ooh, yeah, the PRC nice. again. And just making sure he dodged that. And you can see the way the bracket has been broken down so far. We got Raven and Goga in one half of upper bracket semis. Popotino and Akra in the other bra half of the bracket on the semis and then we got retro mix up and magic rider and zed and rolo 1991 in our first round of lower bracket so beautiful stuff so far already been good guilty gear action i'm really excited for our upper bracket semifinals matches actually i think they are going to be intense stuff but of course if you're looking to get in on this guilty gear strive action as well as a bunch of other action regarding competitive video games go to compete.playstation.com man we got tournaments going on very soon the evil warm-up tournaments are going to begin very soon for mortal kombat 11 Tekken 7, Street Fighter 5, Guilty Gear Strive, all kinds of stuff is going to be going on. All the information can be found at compete.playstation.com, as well as information regarding the games in general. There's an interview with talent and the players to give you a more in-depth look inside or on the, the competitive side of video games. And even beyond fighting games, there's Call of Duty and a bunch of other stuff as well over at compete.playstation.com. But while you're going and doing that, we're going to take a quick break. Please Make sure you take out the compete.playstation.com and we'll be right back with more Guilty Gear Strive. I can't wait to see the action continue. Let's rock.
pushes blazing Still my heart is blazing If the words kill me I don't need a new one Oh dear, you look Soon you will know We already know the smell of the game Can't you see I'm blazing? Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me, I don't need a new world after you. My time is my world. You words will never let me disappear. I'm losing blazing. Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me. And welcome back to twitch.tv slash PlayStation here for the monthly finals of Guilty Gear Strive. I am Ringe, of course, here with fighting game legend Nerd Josh. We've already had some good games, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing great, honestly. This game has had me striving, and I'm striving to even watch more, learn more. 
uh and i i want to see everyone else get on in this tournament circuit so watching this european uh top eight here has been super exciting for me because i'm dealing with all the american gorillas you know <laughs> let's see how it's going in uh europe you know <laughs> yeah right and you know europe has been the land of the axles but not a single axle showing its face here in today's top eight actually we got a lot more aggressiveness coming out as you mentioned right we got raven on the nagori yuki goga on the chip that's going to be our next match but of course we got Papotino versus akarol as well as retro mixup and zed have both qualified into the second round of lower bracket already so they have been moving on good stuff to them gonna be moving on with that soul and that kai right the protagonist the two main characters down there making sure they're not forgotten about here in the lower bracket but next up i believe we are going to have that raven versus goga match Ooh. Now yeah, that should be, be good, good range yeah like, i know there's I a love pole. watching go ahead i love watching nagover yuki but chip has been so explosive right now like who who's gonna be the conductor of this roller coaster that's about to be going down <laughs> right now that's exactly what i want to understand right you could also give your thoughts on the poll going on right now raven versus goga i believe the poll in the chat can be decided on who you think is going to take it right nagori yuki i think is a fan favorite but everyone sees how potent and dangerous that chip is but my man we, we we talk about it right this is how it goes with chip when he's on offense it looks like poor the opponent but when he's on defense he just explodes he gets swung on yeah. especially by nagori yuki i mean this man could knock him out the ballpark right that crouch heavy and like you brought up earlier you trade with one forward heavy and you get otg off the ground by another forward heavy that on chip that, i won't be surprised if that does a near half health situation so he, he has to be crafty he has to be aware of where and how he approaches nago but nago definitely gonna be under a lot of chips game plan and gonna have to take some opposition yeah, and I want to see if our Nagori Yuki player Raven kind of tries to get aggressive out of the gate, right? Tries to like maybe take the fight to Chip before he can get on the back foot, right? Because that's where Nagori Yuki struggles the most. That's what we've seen. Whenever he gets put in the corner or whenever he has to just sit there and block a bunch of sequences, my man has, ooh, the poll results are at Goga at 63%. So a lot of faith uh -huh. in the Chip over the Nagori Yuki. And that's what we talked about, right? When he gets put in the corner, he can get bullied. He's got a five frame jab, but I mean, Chip is the speed ninja, right? The fo the nine frame far slash. Why does he have a nine frame far slash, Nerd Josh? Huh? <laughs> that's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. Everybody's is usually 10 or 11, but he's like, I am the speed star and I'm going to make sure I have a bit of a frame faster on you. <laughs> After plus R, our joke has always been, he went Super Saiyan 2 that game on. <laughs> so, you know, he had to take all the Gohan, young Gohan lumps before that, but he, this is grown chip here. Yeah, it is, it is so good, very fast. And we'll see, but Raven, yeah. this is what we talked about. If he could bring oh. it to chip before chip can bring it to him, it'll be a good look. DP, but he's still got some blood drain. It's actually gonna be up now. So that command throw doesn't accomplish much. Aye. That wall break and that meter advantage might help here. Oh, check. No combo conversion, but the cross up off the RC burst. Yeah, very good. He's keeping him in check with that 2S as well. PRC to make sure he doesn't get caught on some whiff by the speed star chip. Ooh, that was almost it. Yeah, I thought he was dead to be honest. Ooh, counter hit jump D. Not as quite as much of a reward as it did in Exert. Yeah, and he just committing to this jump uh crouching uh, jump down kick you know that move super amount of priority it's very oh. hard to forward punch it you have to do it very preemptively based on the speed and the hitbox alone bro and the gory yuki he's, he's kind of thick he's got a wide hitbox and you can see he actually hit the normal so far that the dp didn't connect <laughs> definitely a little bit of a heartbreaker <laughs> around one ender for ray or a goga excuse me it'd be like that sometimes yeah, you got to make sure you handle the thickness correctly, my friend. Oh, no! Both whipping a throw, which is special. Funny. Yeah, Chip has a lower throw range than most characters, and Nagori Yuki has yeah. a higher throw range than most characters. You know, you, you see, the usually the, the first person to throw wins if they both whiff. <laughs> yeah. It's so scary. Definitely, definitely. And Raven, 
doing a great job once again kind of taming goga's chip and we saw in the chat we had a lot of faith in that goga chip maybe the 63 percent poll result but raven off to a good start and we saw raven in that first matchup uh, against magic rider he was actually the one that made the proper adjustments right he kind of started off a little slow once that soul was on and he kept getting information and kind of adjusting properly so if he's out to a hot star like this and goga doesn't have another character i think he's in danger yeah, this, this actually, it, it could be a case of like we we're talking about overzealot or, you know, ambitious chips just going with the moment, using what they know on their confidence. But at the same time, it's like you, you can't run into these options. The, that one crouch heavy wasn't even into an optimal conversion. It was like a far S OTG, and that still was a pixel off from death. He almost came back, but situations like that, he has to stay away from completely. Yeah, exactly. You just don't want to be there in the first place, right? So we'll see yeah. if he, uh, he uh, gets put in that position again or if he could finally put Nagori Yuki on the back foot and maybe be out a burst or two and really just overwhelm him with the offense. But that's going to be the key to victory for Goga. Well, you can see how far that spin <laughs> reaches on the Gori Yuki as well. Zero on block, but from that distance, if he blocks it, I believe it's up to plus five. So yeah, that move yeah. is very dangerous. And the, the follow-up between two specials is technically a guess on a yeah. lot of characters. Even on three-frame trip, if he commits to the uh, the DP input afterwards, yeah. he could blow up the frame trap. True that, but Goga really getting a good uh, lead yeah. here, getting all the Alpha Blades to hit. I, I, I feel that was, what, like four in a row? Something like that. Ooh, nice 6P as well on the ground, kind of going for these different options. Ooh, okay. I yeah, Goga has found the buttons. He needs to press now. The jump 2K pressure as well. Alpha Blade, keep him in the corner. Nice escape from Raven, though, using the command. Oh, the that, yeah, challenging successfully. Gets Let's the go. bite as well. Ooh, now you are in Nagori Yuki's world. That's why. Yep, the blood rage going down. Wally gets a crouch heavy. Huge conversion. He has the super. Doesn't even need it. <laughs> like a true when, swordsman. Looking beyond just the senses of eyesight, right? He's like, I don't care if you're invisible. I know you're there. It just swipes him out with a 2H. I was nervous for Goga right when that 6H Rekka whiffed. I felt like he could have gotten hit just from there. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, puts himself in the corner. We've seen how dangerous Raven can be with that corner ability. Oh. 6H anti air that gets the counter hit. Three 6Hs and his life is almost gone. Oh my God. Just the two is half life. Oh my goodness. Ay, is that it? Waits for the burst. Corner carry. Yeah, he's gonna have level three on the blood gauge as yep. well. Stuffs him and then kills him with the burst bait. I mean, it wasn't really a burst bait. His normals are just that far that you can't burst yeah. in that situation. But man, we, yeah, that we know- that check right there was burst safe. You have to be aware of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know that the triple six is the mark of the beast, but the triple six H might be the mark of the Raven after that one. My goodness, <laughs> bro. He just deleted Chip's life. He got hit by one six H anti-air, command dash forward, caught him pressing buttons. So he got counter hit there. And then you just get another one after that. And man, that was, that was intense. Just deleting life constantly. You already called it game one, too. Like, I, you weren't feeling it. You're like, unless there's a huge switch in game plan. And the only time we really saw success was going even more abrasive than past strategy. It was like, all right, I'm going to throw four crossos up, then stand slash, you know? Like, so it's, I don't know. Like, even some of the, the nicer things, like that, that forward heavy whiff punish, that wreck a whiff post that, you know? What if Nago swung into that? Would, would Chip would have gotten hit? Like, I'm actually still mortified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly and i really think that even though goga presented that abrasiveness in that first round that's why we saw raven get so many counter hits while he was invisible in that second round right yeah. he was like nah bro like if you're gonna do this i still know that you're there even if you're not on the screen like it doesn't mean your hurt box is gone yeah like goga's stinging like Ooh. a bee but definitely needs to dance like a butterfly a little bit more oh yes i like that a lot and that's exactly what he's doing here, right? Trying to oh. overwhelm Raven, does so successfully, yes. putting a round on the board. Yeah, going with the counter strategy and pays off this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's heavy though. Bro, you can see how much damage he gets because of the Command Dash 5k 6h follow up. I mean, man, it, the Raven has just been so, so optimal about converting every hit he gets. Yeah, we're not even at 80 seconds and got the scout he was aiming for. 
Oh, oh, this could be it for the round. Yes. Yeah, yes. RC, put him back towards the wall. Just one more for a break. break it. And that was super smart because the end of that slash sequence is a, like has a lot of recovery to it. So that's why Raven yeah. didn't mess around. He just did a jab as fast as button possible to make sure he got the wall break before he teched. Yeah, the wall break damage is already so much. He was like, I just need to get the hit. It doesn't matter what it is. Good stuff now from Raven. Ooh. I actually like that jump dust, but it was way out of range. Yeah, now the overhead finally brings it out. Right. Bonsai. Have a blade through the wall, but we're at a neutral situation. No break with the super. Still in the corner now. Raven has the YRC and uses it in the air. A better situation for the blocked opponent. Wow, DP's the 2-1-4-H, oh, and no. then the command grab. Do it for the hit and leap. 2-1. One. In there. And taking it all the way back and doing it his own way. Like, we kept being like, yo, he needs to back off. He needs to make stuff no. with. No, it was like, I'm going to go <laughs> in harder, and I'm going to make them guess harder. I'm going to just straight up apply my strategy. Yeah, and that's what you need to do as Chip, right? You can't give your opponent any breathing room. I, I know we were kind of trying to encourage maybe some type of scouting or like some type of slowing down of the pace just to try to get a better idea of what Raven wanted to do. But the best uh, strat sometimes is just to take your opponent's game plan off the table, right? And that's exactly what yeah. it, uh, Goga did in that match. Yeah, just don't let them play, honestly. And with a character like Chip, that is possible. It's just, we have seen the yin and yang of that. You know, you go in too hard, you get hit like a pinata out of the air. And it's just candy <laughs> for your opponent, raining everywhere. Just picking up the Ws, picking up the prize pots, everything <laughs> that you reward them with. So we'll see though, go and can bring it back. Sweets. Uh. Oh, the mountain Ooh. drill kick, baby. It is very hard to deal with. And then the burst. He doesn't want to surrender this corner, right? Wants to keep it. Raven got a couple of clutch big normals in there to prevent the blood gauge from getting too close to popping. But now he's still got to be concerned about that. Two and a half bars. Goga going to get the wall break. That means the positive meter gain as well. Getting Raven to swim preemptively, though. That's, that's strong here. Just has to be smart about the approach. Aye, nice. Good jumping. A PRC Just will apply no, the will to H. Hey, <laughs> Alpha. Who I is the that. Alpha? Goga looking like it right now. He's got to keep utilizing this character to bring it back. Yeah, I'm surprised now that you say that that Punk doesn't play this character. <laughs> he will soon. He hasn't thought <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. We'll, we'll wait for that sub goal. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, yeah, I, I love this too because Goga had really been conditioning Raven to think about the command throws. He actually stuffed the command throw startup right there. And the Alpha Blades now kind of have a similar startup, but, but are catching him off guard. Spending that wire. See, that's huge. It's basically saying, I can't get you off me. I need this turn because you are not gaining any tension for at least six, seven seconds. All right, it's yeah. back. With Raven very dangerously close to popping, but yeah, these big slashes are gonna prevent him from doing so again. Oh, actually, the RC oh. went the wrong way. The forward slashes took him so far forward that it actually got him underneath during the RC. I... And Goga almost that clone scared me. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we know. Oh no, the blood rage is gonna pop. Yo, you're getting close. Yeah, no. you actually did not notice that. Is this gonna work out for Raven? Oh yes. my goodness, it does! The 2H stuff in the Shuriken. <laughs> Samurai style, he swung blindfolded there. <laughs> yes. Used the Jedi Force, wow. I don't know, man, Zato Ichi is the, the reference to the blind swordsman, but right now, Raven doing <laughs> his best impression with the Nagori Yuki. Uh. Do it right for now. Musashi. Oh, he tries to prevent him from jumping out here. But again, Goga finds the space, jumps out of that. But as soon as he touches the ground, he can start pressing again. Nice. Good jab, though. It's getting close to the corner. This is huge. Ooh, the up RC. I don't know what he's going there for, whether it's conversion or not. Oh, the heavy. Got lucky, though. Very lucky. Yeah, he burns one chip. Oh, he keeps swinging into it. That's a lot of damage. Puts the mask back on as well. Oh, oh my again. God, he's swinging into it again. That could have been it. 
Dodges the Shuriken. He has literally no health. He can't even survive. Chip the 5k anti-air is finally there for Goku to hold on to the game wow. by the skin of his teeth. Oh. I can't think of a usage of anti-air 5k off the top of my head, but right there is all he needed. He needed whatever button would hit, and we're going to that game here. Two to two. I can't believe like Raven even found those hits that he did to make it that close at the end, man. The blood rage popping. I thought I was like, oh, this is for sure over. Clutch burst to survive. Oh, no health, no visual health. We didn't see any of it. And uh, he still made it very competitive at the end. But good stuff from Goga, right? We talked about how if Raven gets off to an early lead, at least I, I assumed that he was going to run away with it. But now Goga has been the one making the adjustments and actually forcing a game five here to get into winner's yeah. finals. And it literally came down to a stand slash whiffing off the combo conversion mid screen. Like, that was huge. <laughs> and my heart racing at the end there. Right? <laughs> like, for real. And now the mountain drill kick already proposing a very annoying threat for Raven to deal with. Tries to fight oh, yeah, K after that, of course. Negative six on the second hit of the Rekka. So, definitely your turn. But he can use the third hit to kind of frame trap you. Oh, hidden leaf command oh, grab yeah. again. Oh, I like that. The Alpha Blade PRC drifts forward to get the corner back, but Raven not going to let him have it. Yeah. That was a little bit of a Cali burst, though, out of Europe. He was ambitious <laughs> with it, wanted to stay alive, but was not able to do so. I'm just impressed. Like, was stinging like a bee earlier, now stinging like a hornet. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Really hurting. Deadly Pretty much hit him with a baseball bat now. Oh, and he's been doing a great oh. job of dancing around as well until Raven finally gets the throw that he's looking for. YRC actually catches the command dash forward. Oh, Usually yeah. you see the command dash back to bait it out. Wow, is it hit? Is it cross up? Is it throw? Like, Raven cannot just guess right now. Whipping the special, the super, but no hit. Wow. Oh, he gets the closest. This is a big combo. You got to guess for game now. But yeah, he doesn't want to use the command dash to go forward. He was bleeding on the oh. blood life. Big trade for Raven. What a trade. Oh. Will he force a last round? Please, bro. I want to see it. Right? Oh, the Shrew could tag it up for now. Let's go, Goga. Oh, silhouette. He yeah, had the, the Shadow clone. Yo. Final round. Yeah, we're going to get what I requested. The Mountain Drill Kick crossing up. But a challenge after that. Oh, my goodness. Both players. Slash. Yeah, they can't find a significant oh. hit. Gets caught reaching. Command Grab going to dodge that real quick. Tries for the meaty, so jumps fast. out of the throw, but still finds the 2S afterwards. Oh, Ooh, what a conversion. The, 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 the cling, though. Here it is now. Get that wall break. Oh, oh big damage. Drops, oh. though. That's unfortunate. PRC to cover. Oh, big bite. He can start going yep. wild if he wants to. Does YRC spin. Good block. Good block. Got the IB, the air throw. The burst oh, we getting is clutch. Yeah, the burst is looming for Goga. You got to be thinking about it if you're Raven, but oh, there it is. Amazing whip punish, amazing block. Yeah, RC to keep that over down from Goga, though. Oh, but the burst is here for Raven now as well. Uses it. Oh, my goodness. Still anybody's game here. Chip cannot eat a single normal. He will die from any age. Oh. But now he's not in the range of those anymore. He doesn't got to worry. Wow, you got to worry about this drill that. kick. Alpha Blade cross up, and he does the deal. 3-2 to so Goga. Gets the clutch you know, W, survives the chat's prediction as well. 63% for the man, brought it back three straight. That was ridiculous. You know, I actually think Raven tried the option select at the very last chance. You know, trying to do that forward punch with punch and kick, you'll get flawless defense on the cross up. Maybe just try the forward punch on the last situation because never committed that whole time to get that cross up FD and just wasn't ready. Like, wow, that yeah. was wild. And we saw multiple times where he did block the cross of Alpha Blade, right? So I imagine you're correct. He just wanted to, to be sure at the end there and ended up, ended up uh, just being the one incorrect decision that he made in that sequence at the end to survive. Sometimes you just get that outcome that, you know, you were not ready for in the very last seconds. And it all just adds up too quickly. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a heartbreaker, but a hell of a set, I gotta say. Definitely our best right? set so far. 3-2 to Goga, bringing it back. And I mean, yeah, you could see, right? Not being discouraged up against the Nagori Yuki. He had his back to the wall multiple times too and just ended up clutching it out. This was such a sick end to the round right here. Yeah, just two aging that last Shuriken attempt to try to get that last bit of health. 6K again, clutching it out. We've seen a couple of 6Ks that were clutch 
Here again, the alpha blade getting that last yeah. cross up he needed. Oh. oh, man, what a set. Yeah, so Goga with that set, victory is going to be taking our first position in a winner's finals, upper bracket finals to see who's going to be going against them. We're going to be going next to Popotino versus Acker All. This should this be going to be good. It's going to be just as explosive, in my opinion, because the character choices alone in the last matches, I don't know. Man. <laughs> yeah. Tito's soul was already solid and scary at the same time. And then on the other end, that Leo, wow. Like, just incredibly solid and in knowing how to take those turns. So yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm not sure either. We'll see, we'll see who the chat thinks of the polls. Uh, results still come flooding in. But Popotino and Acarol, as you mentioned, playing very strong characters. Oh, and the results are in Acarol with a very nice 69% thinking he's going to take it. I mean, that is honestly more faith in Acarol than I thought the chat would have just because Popotino is also playing Soul. But Acarol has been everywhere. He's been looking really good Man. on that Leo. Constant top eights in pretty much any tournament that I've seen him enter in. So because of that, I agree with the faith that is being shown right here. But as you mentioned, slobber knocker of a match here, right? Slugfest yeah. either way. The bad guy versus the white fang. These guys like to duke it out. We'll see, though. We'll see if uh, Acro we'll slows it down a little bit with the fireballs, right? Maybe puts up an obstacle course that slows us to get through. Oh, oh God. Well, that's a, that's a way to get through it. I mean, Soul had all the options to keep Leo in check. Ooh. And Exert, what a counter. But Leo's definitely more prepared this game. Another counter. I'm just worried about the stand kick and how it will deal with a lot of acro setups. But he's doing fine getting that wall break. Yeah, he's like, if you're going to press some buns, I do have a parry. And he's had them on point so far. Oh, it looked like he tried it again. Oh, nice but, shimmy, but didn't get much. And I love that right there. Going into the command grab, putting him on life support. One more guess, and he wasn't looking for the low. But I really love the, the Leos have been starting to do this. When they are see their DP nice and early, they drift down to get to the ground as soon as possible to act. It's very smart. And that first instance cross up out of the corner, that's gonna that's gonna stick with Popatino. I think that's a really good first call out. Ooh, maybe perhaps baiting a burst on that far S right there. Either way, we're gonna get back to back throws. Yeah, just takes the, the charge it does. And Acarol, ooh, you can tell this man's not from California. He did not burst in that quarter sequence, right? He was like, I'll take it, and we'll see how the, the rest of the round goes. Nice, countering the Night Raid Vortex. Oh, and then switching sides at the last second, catching Pobotino off guard. Clipping all the way to the corner now. You got to guess, not watching the toes. Ooh. Ends up getting counter hit, trying to score him out. Oh, no. Ooh, a cross of so away clean, from victory. Yes. Or a Liger Bomb, of course. Shoutouts to Juice and Thunder Ugh. Liger. Let's keep that Seven Lion team going, baby. Oh, you were yeah. right. I didn't even notice. Oh. 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 You know, I, I thought he was going to get one hit there towards the end, but that run up grab post OTG, you're taking that soft knockdown. You better recognize where you're tumbling when those situations arise. Exactly right. When the soft knockdowns happen, you kind of tumble away a bit. And I think that gives the players uh, a false sense of security sometimes about certain options, right? You're like, oh, I'm going to be too far away from this. But Leo, one of those characters that has a really long range command grab, like a chip, right? It's, it's the same type of concept. If you do a soft knockdown and you get, a, get caught kind of sleeping, you're not looking for it, it is very easy to get command grabbed by it. So we saw it there a couple of times, and Acarol, I mean, the chat's looking right so far. He looked good to start. And they were right in the last match, too. Goga, despite being down 2-0, brought it all the way back. Yeah, it's it's so hard to scout that grab, I agree. Because even if you, like, try to backdash it, you might get hit by any of the other options. Mm -hmm. Like, are you really backdashing it? You got to react. Man, he is just slowly walking at the back turn and then checking with the 2K right there. Oh, what a reversal. Flash him in the corner. Panda bringer. Wow. Wow, you can see the, the clean hit on that volcanic viper as well. Big damage on it. Corner carry, of course. I am the bad guy after all. My man Tony Montana runs the corners, but Agarol fighting back. Ooh, just the run-up charge does. He has burst available. Is he gonna use it? Yes, he doesn't want to surrender this round. Still very close in terms of health. Can bring it back. Oh, Night Raid Vortex actually trades with the Fireball, though, so it doesn't give him a clean combo. Oh, no fear. Just wreck us in. 
Fireball, yeah, you gotta respect it. Yes. Wow, the Ford Heavy. No fear back at ya. They Very both swung. fast. Yeah. Just had to throw the bigger normal out. What? Yeah, the, the forward heavy slash like this, I really love the neutral usage of it from Popotino. I mean, it, is, it has a lot of recovery, but it is very yeah. fast. And that's the second time we've seen the parry work on the Bandit Bringer, challenging the command throw that time with the 5K. Aye. Oh no, stop challenging here. It is my corner. Damn, that positive gain. We're all super frightened. What a tech throw. That was very nice. Not gonna give Popotino a better chance of this round, only for it to get dashed away by another throw. Oh my mm, goodness, right start of the round back. flash kick? What? Let's do it. All right, Akaral, you, oh, oh yeah, again. you got the, Why not? The king of the jungle <laughs> blood is running through your veins 100%. I see why you picked this character. Again? Oh, I was expecting it again. So was Popotino. Oh, there's the clean Nyrate Vortex right up under the fireball, trying to tame this Old man. Whiff. Yeah, but just using the dive bomb wow. to get out, actually backdash the throw attempt too. Oh, the Fafnir getting oh, clipped by the fireball. Back. Oh my don't goodness, he's gonna put back. him in the back too. Oh. Which way? Which Wait, way gonna go? Here, bro. <laughs> I'm scared. I, I oh. am too, bro. We are seeing a mauling in the jungle right now, and we can just watch. Oh. That's all. Yo, Popatito was so close, but he is just getting open lows. The cross up to throws. And he is in the corner. Break that glass. Opa! Bruh, they say, they say, there's nothing more dangerous than an animal with his back to the corner. And you saw it right there. <laughs> Akron had nothing left to lose. He knows who runs the jungle. He's got the lion motif for a reason. The king brings it back. <sighs> yo, speaking of the king, you got, you brought that lion energy. And yo, the king is unleashed already. Yeah. Steve, whatever. <laughs> good horoscope for today he could let us know in the chat if it's working for leo but for right now I i'm saying there is nothing but good vibes here you know <laughs> yeah like, definitely. all those cross-ups hit all those lows hit the one throw attempt got counter hit out i was like oh no like and that's what we we're talking about before it's like you're looking for one thing to say no and you are preemptively reacting to so many other things that it just puts you in such a, such a stupor that it's really hard to get your composure back. And despite Popatino being very close to taking that round in game, he's like, okay, my back's against the wall now. I'm gonna bring out Axel. I'm gonna try to use a character that has a little bit of long range normals to try to make sure I don't get caught in this space against yeah. Akron in the first place. And you know, one thing that Akron has been doing is he hasn't been shy about going into back turn, right? He's been willing to like call yeah. out with parry and whatnot, but that's gonna be tougher to do so against Axel because he has these long range options. And of course, Leo cannot block in back turn. Yeah, full screen. This match is incredibly hard for Leo, but Axel Ooh. is a slower character. Very nice reaction super. So you do have to be careful when cornered or been, being put in these meter positions for mix up. But besides that, you're going to see uh, Akarol literally crawling his way to these wins. Wow, and Akarol. Oh, my oh, goodness. Bro, super. Just felt a 2H was coming or a throw or a Rensen. Something long range. Yeah, exactly. Out. And that's why he didn't spin the burst on the dust, right? It was because he was going to risk that super. And if it was blocked, he was going to burst the punish. That's why uh, yep. That's why he hold, held on to it. Now, Republicano didn't I... let that discourage him. Oh, Not a safe no. string. <laughs> that string alone dust, you have to call bro. out with. And the follow-up dust, yeah. Oh, oh and with another? <laughs> we, no. are, uh, we are showing some disrespect out here, bro, for sure. I mean, the, the counter pick can be seen as that. So sometimes you have to, you you have have to, to do fight for your turn. Yeah, you have to be disrespectful when you're in, you know? Facts, man. We've seen how big of a reward that charge dust is. So, I mean, it's worth it. It's worth the risk a lot of the time. Especially up against an Axel where if you've seen, Popatino hasn't really made him pay dearly. Axel does have big combos like we're about to see here. Yeah. Good Ooh, conversion. Boy. Yeah, but now he's just oh. trying to close out this last bit of health. He does so with a stand kick. Akron finally chained up for a little bit via the sickles. Very successful counter pick there. <laughs> you get the two rounder. Ooh, but you know, definitely not over. It has to get two more. And so many 
jump back slashes from Popatino. While that is an incredibly good choice and can just follow up with Rainfall whenever he wants to, we can start seeing more call out six Ps, and that counter hit can convert to the records. So, has to be a little aware. So, I wanted to check if Akerol had any alts as well. And the alternative character he provided us with is also Axel. So oh. if he uh, if he is at the character select screen right now, we might get an Axel mirror. After I talked about how there's no Axels here, okay, okay, we're good. We're no Axel mirror just yet. But we've talked about how EU has been the land of the Axels. There's been Axels yeah. everywhere in Europe right now. So no surprise, both of these guys running the character as a secondary. They got Popatino, Barry Bones, and. Uh... Uh, Mystic, oh, yeah, there's a lot of access over there. Snake Belmont, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch Yeah, there you go, there. even more. <laughs> yeah. And now in the corner here, that's exactly where you need to be as Leo, though. It's like, oh. to prevent Axel from using that long range, gets the command throw as well, gonna wall break through for that increased tension. Aye. This will be back to neutral, so maybe Pobotino can find something to get started. He just wakes up super, takes a page out of Akaral's playbook after the stage Full transition. Screen. Ooh, let it hit, though. Oh, oh but he gets the hits. charge dust. No burst no available burst. here. Oh, so much damage. Gets another guess with Ren set and throw and goes for the jump slash. Okay. Wow, just stay And you away. were saying before, he does have a pocket axle. Europe is the land of the axles, but do these axles like the mirror? I don't know many Hondas that like the Honda mirror, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> these certain types of counter characters versus themselves can be like very hard matchups. So I wonder who's ready for that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Akerol cannot find any type of offense right now on Popotino. He has the corner. Oh. Going to be able to break the wall here if he so chooses. Does to oh, wow. And now a magic pixel. Yup. Checked. Cross up uh, stand kick. And unfortunate because that first round was looking so good. It only took Excellent. one super to put Leo full screen. And he lost literally half his life immediately after. I mean, what a decision by Popotino, honestly, to bring out the super on that stage transition. That really turned the entire game around and now tying it up 2-2. This is when you have to think about changing that character because the way that second round went perfect, that's very discouraging to want to go into the matchup again with Leo. Yeah, but I think using a counter character at least for once, you know, is strong because you're you're throwing a blind side to your opponent no matter what. Yeah. You try to counter pick them two games off the beginning and switch to your main, you're already you're you're swimming through deep water at that point. Yeah, but he's sticking <laughs> with the Leo, he's sticking with the main, what brought him to the dance. Ooh, are we gonna see exactly what we saw in the yeah. other half of winter semis, which was the 2-0 into the three game reverse sweep? Popotino on the verge of it. We'll see Akerol. Got to make sure that distance is closed up. And on that spin cycle, on the, the, the move, on that spin move that he does right there, it, the hitbox oh, the is actually down. only low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Rinsing down. Yeah, it, this hitbox is actually only low. So you can jump in on that and expose it. But I don't know if Akerol yep. knows. Nope. He, he might know. But yeah, no, he just hasn't been put in the opportunity, it. right? A lot of people are used to Axel just mashing the up follow up. So they don't want to get put in a, a block string after. What a counter. Ooh, and that's the thing, right? I mentioned how he can't block and back turn, but that parry does work against supers, as you just saw there. I'm interested to see, though, we haven't seen Popatino get positive. Does he know about the Fenrich chains with the, the, the Rensen down follow-ups? Yeah, I'm Who not knows? sure. Either way, Akerol finds the round he so desperately Needs needed it. to stem the bleeding and now puts himself on set point. Yep. Round away from winner's finals. He's been on the ropes the last two games. Ooh, jumps out of the command throw. Gets the counter here. Recovery punish as well. Ooh, into a command throw of his own. Liger bomb. <laughs> Let's go. Setting up shop here. But Popotino gets out and sends oh, him to the other flashback. side. Yo, and that is what's so good about Leo in this matchup, at least, is that you don't have to pick what side you're going to reversal DP that vacuum on. You could just flash kick your way out. Unfortunately, gets sure. thrown towards the corner. Another flash kick. Can push full screen again. Gets the run in though. I like Ooh. the the weight blocks and the the swings, but no. Oh, Patino, trying to tie this up right now. You oh, see the slash oh. fireball. He had actually stuffed the command throw attempt. Oh, oh! oh. Gold burst. Yeah, Gold you are burst. negative on that dive bomb. That's why he flash kicked afterwards. Jumps out of the command grab again. RZ to keep it safe. Oh. Cooking with that meter. He's looking. 
A little buttery post burst there, and it's paying off with the good taste. Oh my goodness, final round here once again for another winner semis match. See who faces Goga in winner's finals. Oh. In the corner, Akerol, you cannot lose this position, my man. Goes right. into the back turn, tries to parry. It looked like he wow. did catch an air normal. So many jumps, so many high times, and still gonna get away. Oh, the hit, okay. Oh, tried it's the command out, throw, but he jumped out, blocks the burst as well. Didn't spend the RC to get out of the corner. Slowly oh, jumps. Yeah. You saw he thought about it for a second, but didn't want to risk getting clipped. Uh-oh, jumps. But the last the second, he gets the close as anti-air. That's big damage. Doesn't build to the oh. super, but he didn't need it. The guard break plus the wall break does wow. enough damage to approve Acker all to the winner's finals. Approve the poll results as well. 69% success after a very dangerous comeback from Popotino. Man, the double head, but that hurt. Wesley Willis will be proud. Man, that just checking him. Boom, boom, bam. That combo. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the double close S. That was such a damaging starter. Oh, and I mean, what wherewithal for Akerol to actually use that normal to anti-air in that situation. So you see, this is the way it all started off, right? Pobotino, we got to collect ourselves as we go to the replays. Because, man, my, again, my, my blood is pumping here with these last round winner semis matches. We're going to see uh, the upper bracket finals should be uh, fantastic as well. But Akerol ended up closing it out here. The first two games were all Akerol. And then we saw Pobotino switch to the Axle and really start to tame the Lion here for the first two games. Yeah, literally brought a leash out. Like, it took so long. You would see... Acro go through so many switches of should I just block or should I spend record now because they respect I'm blocking and they're gonna swing you know like so it became such a guessing game just to get in you can see didn't want to risk and then gets clipped by the overhead there nice that was it the closest counter hit what a damaging starter and then yeah that bar break follow-up man this is one of his best wall break enders and Akerol knew it went to it to take the 3-2 over Popotino and put himself up against Goga in upper bracket finals as Popotino drops down to face retro mix up another soul mirror for that one that's going to be good and Raven versus Zed also rounding out our lower bracket quarter finals so great stuff to all of our competitors so far I can't wait to get into the action again but before that I need y'all to do me a favor and go to compete.playstation.com you know what I'm saying that is your one-stop shop for all things competitive video games we got information regarding strive street fighter mortal kombat tekken and the like and beyond fighting games as well with call of duty and in-depth interviews regarding talent uh, players anything that you want to know regarding the competitive video game scene you could find it over and compete.playstation.com but once again man these were some adrenaline filled matches i need a break to calm down before we get into that lower bracket action so please stick with us here on twitch.tv slash playstation we'll be right back with more guilty gear strive peace Is <laughs> 
Can't you see I'm blazing? Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me, I don't need a new world after you. My time is my world. You words will never let me disappear. I'm losing blazing. Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me. Welcome back to twitch.tv slash PlayStation for the monthly finals of Guilty Gear Strive. And we've had a beautiful tournament already. 3-2 last round for both upper bracket semifinals matches. I am Ridge, of course, joined by Nerd Josh. How you been liking the Strive, my friend? Yo, I've been enjoying it. There's been some beatdowns for some bursts here. And whether they get it or not, it has been relentless with the Strive gameplay here. You can tell how long... They've been playing these last three weeks since release. Yeah. And look at the bracket develop already. Wow, we're getting into this final four action. The cream is thick. Yeah, as far as me and Nerd Josh go, you know, we've been fiending for Shrive, and so have all these players in our top eight, man. They're just uh, our fellow fiends today, as Goga and yeah. Acker all are going to be our next match. It's going to be the upper bracket final between the two, so that's going to be an amazing match that I'm looking forward to. And you can see updated lower bracket results as well. Popotino taking it 3-0 over Retro Mixup, and Zed taking it over Raven 3-1. Wow, Zed hey. able to tame the Nagori Yuki with the Kai, and Popotino proving the superiority in the Soul Mirror. I assume maybe 
pulled out the axle we'll see in the lower bracket semifinals. but we got to get to that after goga versus acker all of course so of course i want everyone to let me know in the chat who they think is going to win as well between these two players remember chat actually picked both of these players to win their winner semis matches so it definitely they're on the right track now i want to see who is the chat's true favorite between goga and acker all yeah, this should just be super exciting. Akarol has made a fan out of me from this event, especially winning that counter pick. Wow. Mm -hmm. so nah. Be... Nah, Whoa. the results are not the 50-50, son. Is it actually the tie? The split? Between? Oh, wow. A, a wow. Guilty Gear tradition. A Guilty Gear tradition. We, it's uh, glad that we got the split here in the tie 50-50 on the results. <laughs> we'll see if wow. Goga can take it or Acker all again two very dangerous characters two very dangerous players as well been pretty much everywhere and you can see the chip coming out for goga Acker all with the leo and i mean we've seen both of these players really impose their will impose their game plan on their opponent and it's all about who's going to be able to do that first yeah even when we doubted goga's ability early set he he overcame and applied that offensive style in a different uh stroke the really paint a different picture yeah exactly right kind of switched up the rhythm a bit and that's uh what you need to do a lot of time when you cannot find how your opponent gets opened up All right now oh both pressed from long distance yeah shake my hand <laughs> ouch our knockdown got the otg to grab that has been paying off a lot mm -hmm. the otg really does seem to be the primary time to catch the opponent slipping with that command grab and Akral is taking the first round off of it. Like just Ooh. on counterplay alone there, what do you do? Backdash? What if they yeah. slash fireball? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Then I'm just even further in the corner having to block this. Ooh, but a nice jump out from Goga. <laughs> Gonna get, grant him some reprieve for a moment. Oh. Big whiff DP. No, the no. counter hit pushed him too far away. Unfortunate, that drop could have been cash money, but still has the corner opportunity with the run under nice oh yeah but that's the thing right is if you're not punishing this chip command grab when he's in the air he can freely act once he touches the ground that's why you saw the back-to-back -back six p's you got to make sure you tag him while he's in viz or else he's going to be dp in or six p in something to stop you or six k in to make sure he gets that last bit of health he needs true that Acrol getting overwhelmed there but was getting out some of those leap throws that's really hard to judge yeah yeah and uh, nice you, you have to uh you have to uh, trust your other senses your eyesight betrays you on the command grab oh. he's there his hurt box is there you just can't there. see yeah you gotta believe yeah you gotta you gotta play this matchup a thousand times and no Ooh, the CR. straight out of may straight out of may's playbook literally hey, that's why from, the dolphins are squad. so strong the otter yeah. can't keep him in check no more, you know? It's <laughs> a good point. He's got to become a ninja just to tame the dolphins yeah. again. True. Oh, what a swing back. Nice cross up. Got the juggle, but backed off. Really felt it would have been a reversal, I feel like. And yeah, the PRC drift forward to get the throw. Oh my goodness. Just Done. presents the mix. And yeah, Goga not checking his legs early with a super to back it up. Akarol taking oh. the first game of the finals. If my character's dead, Chip's definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> if I look at that light bar and it's Chip, I, mean, and I know my character's dead. Like, yeah. Later. Bye-bye. No chance. <laughs> yeah, I know you're a president. I know you're a warlord. You've they recovered from some amazing things, but you still don't got the health to survive, Leo. Just how it is. No, it's true. It's true. Like we saying before, the glass cannon. He does have the ammunition, but you know that that cannon can break. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I mean that's what Akarol is going to continue to try to do, right? Make sure that whenever Chip comes near him, he pays dearly. And that's really what we've been seeing so far. We haven't really been seeing like a lot of fireball game from Akarol. He's been throwing it out here and there, right? Just because you want to make your opponent think about it. But it's more trying to stop that Chip onslaught, which is what we said is step one in the game plan against Chip anyway. Is making sure that he doesn't just get to overwhelm you for free. That's true. But on the same end, a lot of his level one, level zero is just working. Like, why even derive from that when mm -hmm. you could just OTG kick throw for that much damage or something? Maybe we'll mix it up here. Who knows? 
I mean, Agarol don't need to do any mixing up so far, right? If he sticks to the game plan, maybe he wants to stay ahead of Goga's adjustments, perhaps. But right now, as long as he can get a corner like this, it'll be a good look. I oh, yeah. again, that same trade. I feel yeah. like it was the same time last game, too. <laughs> Goga has been looking Are for a lot down. of forward punches. Again. Oh, the OTG oh, command go. grab. I'm taking a walk around my room right now. <laughs> oh, the hit. The 2K, man, it really just be catching people off guard, not expecting to start tumbling into a wake up and then command thrown corner for the follow up and he's just dead. Wow, actually the Berserker Slash getting through that far heavy slash. Oh, finally going against it now can use that or go against it, you know? Go against oh, the wave, no. nice counter. That, again, Drops that happened again. before though. Yeah, he uses the 6P to get the counter hit punish and the 2S whiffs. Goga, go lab this when you watch this video. Yeah. I wanna see them clean counter hits in this matchup. Ooh, there's the 6P, I, yeah, it's good. Yeah, again, we saw this in the first game too, is oh. Akarol jumping out of the command grab in the corner, but he's trying to land with buttons and you can't. Chip is free to act. Nice clone pressure. And the overhead they didn't even go for the wreck on the chip yeah, you Straight can air mix. throw chip out of his command throw you could also press a button whether it be an air button or a ground button you could do that to interrupt but yeah a lot of the time when you jump out that's kind of your natural instinct against command grabs but it can really cost you against chips command grab do you know if you cannot afford kick because i know it's considered airborne in xx <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question i'm not sure hi good block the run up on the punches and gets the cross up out of the corner. Optimal placement here. Now, oh, and then he reaches long distance with the stand kick again. Nice parry on the other side. Because he knows how far that far slash goes for Chip. Ooh, the pillar counter hit. That's big damage. Huge Some damage. corner carry, but a DP. Going to keep him mid screen Hell, for now. RC. Oh, that's true. Cool. Ooh, the PRC oh, to cover the it. sweep. Oh, the nice. second low clips. And that's how it happens. You're like, I'm trying to get out of this cross up. I'm trying to get out of this front mix up. You're holding forward or back. Mm -hmm. And then dun, dun, dun. Second <laughs> low post slash. Yeah, good stuff from Akarol again. I mean, that second game looked a lot like our first game there, Josh. Like there were multiple instances where the exact same things happened, right? Like we saw the DP this counter hit punishable. You had the trade. The jumping out of the command grabs in the corner and an Acarol victory. That was also the most important thing that repeated in the second game. So for Goga, he definitely needs to try to switch up some things. Mainly that counter hit punish. Like that DP yeah. counter hit punish, he left so much damage on the table both times just because the way it's going, he's not expecting it to interact like that. I don't know if it's like a Leo specific thing or like a, a wide hitbox type thing that's happening to him or what, but yeah. we saw it multiple times where he gets the counter hit. I believe that's 6P to start it. And then he goes with the crouch S after. And usually this 2S has a lot of distance to reach, but it hasn't been reaching. And he can whiff cancel it into the two heavy slash, but that's not an actual combo. Yeah, that push box en enough to where he's not getting these conversions. So, it But I will say we have seen some differences too in the matchup and we have seen uh, some jump outs of that actual soft knockdown setup. So are we going to see a continuation of the mix up or are they just going to bring it back and play off that? Because, you know, you getting that commitment to the jump, there has been different interactions. So, so you know, so I believe this is actually game two. So I believe the, the game two that we just watched was legitimately game one. That is why we said everything happened the same as it did. <laughs> so oh. I don't know what happened. Um, but oh, okay. Akron is up 1-0 and we're going into game two. Okay, my bad. <laughs> no, right. this is, this is, yeah, this is a confusing situation. So we'll see how I, Goga bounces back. I just thought they played the matchup a lot. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you know, I, was like, I was like, it looks close enough. But I, I don't like, think they're in the exact same spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you even said at the beginning, too, you're like, oh, I think it's the exact same time as that first game. I don't know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, now oh. trying to spin on him, trying to get the tornadoes going. Oh, what a yes. Miss. The Rekka. The first hit of that Rekka being the simple enough damage stuff. that he needed. Yeah. Sure. Like, just jump H hitting twice, and then they make that whiff, and they go low. Like, that's enough to keep you guessing. Mm -hmm. Yes, gets it on the other side as well. Oh, the DP going oh. through. Keeps it simple this time. 
gonna get good damage. Go for the positive break post super. Nice. Yes, indeed. Goga off to a good start here. Oh, trust the alpha blade, but it whips because of the DP invul and the flash kick. Very awkward setup. Oh, the super coming out, but it is blocked. Blocks the very last hit, too. It doesn't even want to swing before the Degeneration X. And we got a super punish as well. Goga going to be able to put himself on the board. One up. Yeah, so good stuff from Goga here. Able to bounce back from that first game loss to tie it up. This is going to be probably down to the wire, man. Both of these players look so good in their winter semis matches that I can't expect either one of them to get off to a big lead. Yeah, no, this, this has literally just been in each other's faces, slobber knocking until somebody can get a, a, a W going. So I'm not I'm not sure like uh, this, this could go either way. Long set. Yeah, yeah, and it's looking like both players are going to be able to make the adjustments they need to. Right. We already see Goga bouncing back and we saw Goga bounce back from an O2 deficit in the first place. And then, I mean, we saw Acker also bounce back from like, taking two round, two game losses straight to Axel. So both of these players have proven they have the adaptation skills and the uh, the toughness, the grit to really grind yeah. through the games and clutch it out. They, they have the nerves and there's specialists here. They're sticking to their guns. So, you know, they can play the bad. They can play the good. They, they've been there. Yeah, they're not going to abandon their characters at the first sign of uh, struggle, right? Without struggle, there is no progress, <laughs> as a wise person once said. I can learn from that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Ooh, nice that I, I didn't mean for it to be shots at the Faust players. Oh no, just, it's cool. I was just trying to build on the point. <laughs> Nage held it down last night. Shout out to Nage. That, that, nice yeah, that's throw. Nice throw. He definitely did. Oh yeah, that's counter hit punishable. Oh, but some damage left on the table, it feels like. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dual two. Woo. Those flash kicks. Yeah, definitely oh, has been a, a potent tool for Leo, even when it whiffs. <laughs> it's a potent tool for his opponent. You can see the big damage. And he didn't uh, <laughs> yeah. mess up the punish that time either, right? Ooh. Something explosive on both sides happening. Man, these counters just chasing it down. Nice shuriken. Throw the ninja star. <sighs> Ay, what a cross-up slash. Yeah, landed as the DP whiffed. Taz over here going through the trees back to mid screen. Ooh, he actually built the RC in the middle of that throw. I wonder if he could have got a follow up. I'm not really sure how that throw works with Chip. PRC, or excuse me, Blue RC. Oh. I thought was going to make the throw punish easy, but he ends up getting parried on the other Ouch. side and he died for it. Oh my God. I mean, that super only does a bajillion damage. Yeah. The value Bro. literally just says bajillion in words, it's not even a number value. Oh, and he hit him with a classic clothes. Only two things in this world are insurmountable. A mother's recipe and me, King Leo. <laughs> Good Lord, man. That man is a I mean, monster. That's a Leo quote there. That's a Leo horoscope right there. Yeah. <laughs> He's letting us know how his day's going already. Get out yeah. of the way. The king is here. Uh, that is my favorite win quote in the entire game, I think, that one. So uh, I'm glad we got to see it. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what we talked about, right, is that Chip, when he's just overwhelming you, you're like, oh, man, this character, he looks so dangerous. And then he ended up BRCing, I thought, to slow down the opponent, right? I was like, okay, he's going to BRC yeah. him, slows down the Berserker Slash. The throw's going to come out. It ended up being, like, a little bit of a scramble. And one of the best options to go for with Leo in the scramble is the parry, especially when you have the super to back it up. Ooh, again, calling out the stand slash with the IEDH. Ooh, reversal on the clone, okay. Yeah, he's going to burst nice and early. Doesn't want to give Akaral a significant life lead or anything like that. You can see Akaral trying to check with the far S's from distance. Does get Mountain Drill kicked load, but he actually chases the back dash with the Berserker oh. Slash. I liked Goga's mid-screen pacing, though. The run jump IED backwards, but Akaral finally getting in, rushing him to the corner and getting that wall break. Indeed. Oh, does get clipped here. No, he doesn't want to give him his burst, but he's got a lot of health to survive. The chip damage is going to need a couple of hits, but he can get them fast, especially if he sneaks in a command throw. Oh, PRC, he didn't want to get clipped by that fireball. Speaking of not getting clipped, wow, the slowdown made that situation so difficult to defend against. Great Berserker Slash cross up decision from Akaral. Now, gonna be able to get the wreck in the corner here, starting to harass with the overhead. Stop that. 
He had a low high and he had enough. He was like, I'm just swing. Yeah, and the wake up throw on the parry, that was a hard call out. Oh no, too far for the command throw. My man be whiffing heavy when that happens. Oh, good challenge as well. Tries for another reversal slash, but this time the air. Can he be able to maneuver around it properly? Dodge and punish. Goga trying to hold on here. Oh, man. Is it able to just stuff him completely? Now it's the back turn in the corner. Hits him with the overhead. Going to get the wall splat off of it. Breaks the wall. Positive tension gain, but with no super. Yeah, it's going to be neutral scenario here. The triple jump gets him so high up. Very hard to chase him down, even when you PRC to slow him down. Alpha Blade, bringing him back to the corner. Reversal Flash Kick, get off me. Drift Ooh. down for the follow-up. Puts himself in back turn, awesome. doesn't check the Alpha Blade. Oh, doesn't wow. check it again. Living on a prayer right now. Oh, another Ooh, hit. The ground. No full pickup, but that forward punch. And it's unfortunate, because look at that meter capability right there. Could have tried to make something happen in that final chance of life. Acro, yo. The astral projection 6P. My man literally <laughs> just puts an image after image of himself out of his chest. I don't know what type of kingly ability that is, but Leo has had it since Exert, and you can see it rear its head once again here to seal that match for Ackerall. I mean, good stuff, man. The 50-50 poll results as well. I mean, we knew this was going to be close, and Ackerall looking super strong. You see the replays of the set going down right now. This is that very first time where he kept trying to jump out of those command grabs, and again, to defend against that command grab from Chip, you need to press a button, jump in the air and press a button or air throw him. It is very difficult to do something after he lands because he can DP, he can forward punch for the upper body invul. And yeah, it's just, this is a hard look to deal with. Man, Leo, just everything he does looks like it hurts so much. He just yeah. tosses you like garbage, gets the cross up. Oh, also backdash is usually good against air throw or against command grabs, but this one with chip is also pretty far range, right? So it's hard to even backdash it. You need to use the in bowl window, not really the distance that you gain. But anyway, yeah, the alpha blades <laughs> have been rearing his head as well, kind of trying to bring him to the ground. And that was it. The clutch forward punch to stop the air. That's the air approach because of the upper body in bowl. So Akerall going to be taking his spot in grand finals upper bracket winner side going to be awaiting the winner of Goga versus the winner of Popotino and Zed. Nice, Akerl sitting on the throne waiting for the rest. I mean, where else should a king reside right now? Elsewhere besides grand finals. So wear that W on your chest proud for now, because there's a lot of killers coming your way soon for that double set. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. And uh, we are going to get into our next set right now. It's going to be Popotino versus Zed. Again, our resident soul main versus our resident Kai main. This is the lore battle, right? These two are the, the friendly rivals uh, for quite a while in the story. And I got it. I can just as a side note, you should really check out the Guilty Gear story if you haven't. It is a, quite the roller coaster of a ride. Zed actually 54% for our poll results as well. Favored over the Popotino soul, which surprises me a bit. I actually haven't seen the story, but I saw the trailer during the Arxis event, and it, yeah. it has me hooked to want to watch it right away. That car scene, I don't want to ruin anything, but that was so cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't even just mean the Strive story either. I mean, like, go back, check out the old Guilty yeah. Gear stories. I mean, you oh, need yeah, it all course. up to this point yeah. because the lore is. I mean, I, Daisuke, I want a campaign setting book, dog. All right, whenever you can get it to me, let me. I want all the details. I'll buy that off jump. But anyway, it's, we're gonna go into our loser it's, semis. It's, this is my favorite post-apocalyptic metal yes. opera. You know, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But, uh, we got the pro swagonist battle here. You know both the main characters kai's kind of been you know slept on a little bit you know there's a little gripes about the character but he does have some good quality of life and soul's just the beast the beast yeah. you hear the intro about all the time so like this should be interesting and zed is rocking the soul version of kai right maybe trying to harness some of those uh, top tier powers at the moment Oh, the charge just oh. gets challenged immediately with the Volcanic Viper. But you can see Zed willing to slug yeah, it out conversion. as well. Wakes up and just stun dippers. Five frame low. That goes half screen. Pretty good. Good damage. Got the positive. Got an RC here. Doesn't care about the burst. I like that. He's like, you know what? You could spend it early because you're going to need that in the next round against me. 
Yeah. Oh, the dash under 5k. Oh. As soon as he sees Zed take to the skies, he's like, I got him button for that. We're cornered already. Yeah, I mean, he's been blocking these charge dust again. Charge dust 28 frames, so definitely very reactable, but it's just not something you think about. It's not something that's at the forefront of your mind almost ever. Ooh, reversal ride the lightning. That's going to break the wall as well as it goes through the far S of Soul. Going to give him the increased tension gain here. You know, he Ooh. wants to put those block stuns on him, or the block strings, I should say, to build that bar. Yes, Super is going to get bursted. Oh. Ooh. Stuffs the Night Raid Vortex on the, with the Crouch S. That was clean. That whiff punish just obstructed that whole game plan with the low profile oh, yeah. Vortex. That crouching slash was ready. And that like I so mentioned cool. earlier, like I, I see promise with this character because my roommate is Kizzy K and I play him a lot. And he's really nice. You should, if you play Kai, you should watch him play. It's but, real scary. Uh, real scary. Yeah, it's really scary. It, he, this character is an anime show, to, uh, an anime like Ryu or Ken. So like those kind of types of characters have really good tools, and you, a character applying footsies like that, getting the whiff punishes, getting that positive gain to be able to keep the pressure on and get these hit confirms or apply more. That's important for Kai. Kai needed that and was able to get that in the matchup. Yeah, and that's what something I think as people have been talking about and praising with Kizzy's game plan, right, is the fact that he really prioritizes the ride, the lightning. And what that gives you is a lot of the time it carries them all the way to the wall and breaks it. And that gives you the plus frames on the stage transition knockdown and mm -hmm. that increased tension gain. And, you know, we talk about positive bonus a couple of times here. So it increases tension gain passively. You gain a little bit more passively. It increases the tension gain you actually build from normal tension gain moves that build you meter. It nullifies the penalty of the tension tension gain gain or the tension meter gain which is why those rc block strings work you keep getting the meter because it nullifies that and it gives you a 10 percent increase in damage and a 10 percent decrease in the opponent's damage that you take so yeah it, is, it might uh, be mad quite nice. the reward yeah it's exactly <laughs> some people say this game doesn't have a comeback mechanic but sometimes i think that is it's like do i want hard knockdown or do i need extra meter to play this matchup mm -hmm. so yeah it is it does it all it definitely does it all yeah true Oh, what a punish on the burst. Looking like Lord Zed right now. <laughs> Ooh, we're already going to get that positive bonus again. And now let me see. Oh, Zed trying to lock Pobotino down in this corner. Hey. Pobotino switching to the axle, right? It's something I got... I kind of glossed over when I was oh. talking about positive Bane. And we're going to see him gloss over that command grab via the Ride the Lightning again. Great reactions from Zed. RTL, baby. Yes, sir. Oh, and catching that air fireball. Nice. Yeah, but now he's going to be trying to lock up the angles that Zed wants to approach from, right? That is uh, Axel's primary game plan. The ability to stuff every single angle that you want to approach from. Ooh, that was kind of nasty. The command grab into the cross of low nice. setup. So good with these up Rensen call outs Ooh. and the counter hit crouching heavy. Very nice. Yeah. Zed, and like you we were saying, like, he's been so good at those up, well, up ones, you know, like, yeah. you're looking at the explosions, Ooh. trying to respect the ground game, which he's been doing, but... He's been seeing all these up. Oh, not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Finally, Zed able to switch up his uh, decision making enough to prevent Pobotino from really catching on. That's for saying, but oh, there's the explosion going back to that now, catching Zed, uh, holding up oh. back. Ooh, Man, he's spacing here. That call out with the 6K to immediately get the throw. Very nice. Oh. And the crouch heavy, it's a very long low. You know, you're trying to get that run in approach, you got to watch your legs. Yeah, and Pobotino did a great job switching to the Axel again, right? We saw him fall uh, before to Akerol with the Soul and Switch and took two games straight. And look, he's uh, repeating that trend here. Takes the first game. We'll see if he can uh, keep the momentum going and kind of alter that ending to that Akerol set, right? Because we saw the Akerol set. He ended up getting the two games straight, but then fell in that third game. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, it should be interesting. I, I like the Axel pick. It's the jump slashes are working really well. It's just how long will they work for against a character with such a, a wide range uppercut? You know, just calling that out on an air move is safe on block anyways. So you, you gotta, the jump slashes are needed on the check, but you can't bank on it too hard. That's a fantastic point. Oh, again, already starting off with the command grab. 
kind of condition him to worry about it nice and early. Yeah, that is plus four, I believe. That's 6K. I could chase that. Corner positioning for Zed. He's going to burst just for any, any hey, turn he here. Brief. Get the, the distance back. Oh, and that's exactly where Pulpitino wants to be. Neutral. Mid screen has his back with plenty of space to retreat to if he needs it. Oh, the slowdown actually stuffs Zed's normal. I like that. Good awareness. Yeah, but as we continue on this game, right, you're going to see more and more abuse of that slowdown mechanic from the RCs. And right now, Popotino doing a good job of abusing Axel's range, not letting Zed get in. Now, BRC incredibly solid for Axel. What a burst beat. Not only can he whip punish way better with it, but he gets so many different uh, jump cancel extensions with Blue Bomber that you get the, the frame stop. You can get full screen conversions with that. Yeah, that was a really good flip kick to uh, expose the gap in that command throw there. Oh, oh but he's so far nice. away. The command grab didn't have much range to travel on, so it caught him wow. very quickly. Very quick. And Popatino with a really good read here, just dictating the neutral, just straight zoning. Classic zoner play. Yeah, and the farther you away, the farther you are away from that command grab, the easier it is to get clipped by it, right? Because if you're like mid screen, it has to travel from back towards you again. But if you're all the way at the other corner, it goes to the back and then instantly clips you. So that was definitely yeah. good stuff from Popotino, making sure that he has that spatial awareness. And that's something the Axles really thrive at, right? That's something you need to play the character. No, definitely true. Having that awareness, but you know, like we were talking about. I mean, Axel has to be aware in multiple things. Like the jump back slashes against the DP was one thing, but just his mix up game alone, you're like, you're mixing up full screen throw with Rensen and pressure. While it's incredibly safe, you know, uh, he does, he can't become that overzealot, get that overzealotness with the throw. Yeah, exactly right. You can't be too linear with your gameplay or your decision making. If you start relying on one option too much, even if it's good, the opponent will find an answer, and especially one yeah. as capable as Zen. You got to use it, but, you know, sometimes you got to keep that card in your hand so it keeps working. Precisely indeed. And now tries to get him. Yeah, tries to get him sleeping from long distance, but Zed's not going to have that. Actually takes it to the sky and gets a hard knockdown. Shock stayed over him as well. I don't know. He was trying to crouch oh. that jump normal, but it's not going to be doing it this time. Reversal nice super RC. get off me. Oh, no, the low is out. Yeah, he, he RC he to keep the pressure on. <laughs> I think that was like a BRC. It might have just kept tr committing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, either way, it did not work out. And now Pobotino on set point here, able to backdash the throw as well and block the burst follow up from Zed. So this is uh, the ideal starter to this last round, potentially. Yeah, Pobotino can smell that lower bracket finals. Yeah, exactly. That match against Goga. Oh, the clash. And he just kept going with the range. Oh, the, oh throw. the command throw, and that's going to switch sides. Works. Oh. Just do it. It's such a heartbreaker to finally get Axel to the corner and then get side switch via the command throw. But wait. Yeah. Gets the side switch with the cross. Oh. Under chase down the back dash to commit it right? to the run. I like that extra run into them just to, to set a message. But, man, yeah. that forward kick. Unfortunate. Caught with the anti-air. Pepitito making it. Man, Zed, that was, that was, yeah, a lot of cojones on that run all the way in right there, right? Called out the backdash hard because Popodino had been doing that a lot on Wake Up, looking for the throw because Kai really be on that strike throw game, right? We talk about it a lot with Guilty Gear Strive, but that is his primary tool in annoying his opponent. And Popodino did a good job keeping that at the forefront of his mental stack, constantly backdashing. And again, just closing out the set as soon as he switched to the axle, really, three games straight. You saw him drop this game with Soul, but not a single one on the axle low. Yeah, Kai's just always trying to get you to hit buttons. So whether you're running in, trying to get that throw, or you're backing up, trying to get them to swing at you and retaliate with a whip punish, you have to be incredibly on point and set the pace. And Papatino did just such a good job of, of like stopping all of that. Just threw the Acme sign out and let him run into it, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And that's what you need to do as Axel a lot of the time. That's your responsibility is to put up that wall to not let the opponent get through. And he did a great job of doing it. And even when he got through here, right, we saw using the YRC. And then again, you want to take to the skies, just shuts that down immediately. And that's how the bracket has gone so far. Popotino has been switching to the Axel and then finding a lot of success. 3-0 over Retro Mixup, 3-1 over Zed, and now has taken his spot in 
lower bracket finals to go up against Goga, see who gets that grand finals match against Acker All. So oh, good man. stuff to all of our competitors so far. It's been a hell of a monthly finals for the EU edition of Guilty Gear Strive. And yeah, we're going to get into the next match right now. No break or anything like that. We are keeping the Strive rocking. It's going to be Golga versus Popatino, as we mentioned. Chip versus Soul. Ah, I, I, who, yeah. do you, who do you like in this one, Josh? Or, I mean, Axel, too. We'll see. We'll see who he starts with. Honestly, I, I like the 50-50 again. But, you know, it is early. So maybe we'll see Soul like, overcome on some scrambles but uh I, I think goga's been playing really strong with chip and you know after being more warmed up throughout the day you know maybe we'll see some different strategy applications go on oh huge on goga here so yeah let let me learn i, I want to <laughs> see why yeah, the chat, once again, 67% for Goga, maybe having a lot of faith in that chip. But they've been pretty accurate with their predictions so far. So we'll see if they continue the accuracy. Because, of course, we saw the grand finals was a 50-50. But I guess you're either always right or always wrong on the 50-50, right? So we'll, uh, we'll just uh, count <laughs> that as, as a wash. Yeah. <laughs> see if uh, they continue success. Still good odds. Man. Still great odds. <laughs> True. <laughs> when he is going to start with the soul, nice and early. And I mean, yeah, we've seen how quickly Chip can die to the soul. Oh, especially when you get your burst baited, the clean oh hit volcanic viper, just deleting most of his health bar in four hits. I mean, oh, and then he commits to the DP. All right. Well, that was about, what is that? A 14 second round, 85 seconds yep. remaining on the clock. I mean, soul, it's clean for a reason. You know, it was efficient, no mess involved. Oh, no. And Goga, I mean, he might not even get his burst back here if it continues oh. in this type of pace. Was lucky to get out of the corner and fish a counter into a throw setup. Very nice. Oh, <gasps> 5K. It's three Checks frames. The alpha blade. Oh no, put him in the corner as well. For anyone that no. doesn't know frames, that means it is the fastest move. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one, one yeah. <laughs> the uh, throws are two frames in this game. Fastest normal attack of three frames, and it is yeah. exclusive to the two characters you see on the screen right now. And interesting enough, you can't throw a character on wake up for five. So these characters can actually wake up swinging if you're trying to instill a throw game on their wake up. So very scary for both of them to try to make each other respect. A nice finish to the set, or excuse me, the match. Bobotino able to take it once again, setting Chip ablaze as Soul always seems to do. He just always threw, lighted his opponents on fire. Yeah, I mean, Soul gets that ignition going. He's ready to rock. And... Uh, honestly like he he's got that giant lighter to, for that last song you know people want an encore he's ready for it <laughs> that's facts he definitely brings the giant lighter into the skies lets everyone know that you are seeing the last of the character that he's facing this is to say yeah. the least if you want an encore you're gonna get it now because it's a it's a long set you know it's three out of five so you'll get a couple of appearances from your favorite characters but they're all gonna fall in the end to the bad guy that's just how it goes <laughs> So bad, Dad. Let's see how he goes through with it. Oh, man. Yo. The clean hit from the start, though. That definitely <laughs> yeah. got this popping from the beginning. I have an OG friend that plays Soul, and that's all he talks about. is like, yo, I got clean hit DP. <laughs> like, he's just like, he's like, oh, yeah. It is. Uh, it, the impact of it is really just so satisfying. Like, the slowdown of the entire game yeah. on the clean hit. Like, it's so good. Ooh, bouncing him off the wall. Oh, just swinging, but no conversion. Oh, nice you know he play. tried that 5K again. That's why that counter hit Alpha Blade happened. <laughs> oh, the Shrugan meets a Shoryuken and a Luzix in kind. Counter back with a VV and a counter back with the Ford Heavy. Wow. <laughs> oh, and again, his burst. Oh, and yeah, oh, he has damage. the Volcanic Viper punishments. Oh, one more throw away from death. Are we going to get an even quicker round? No, go, go. Fighting back, not going quietly into the night for Ooh. a second. Punishes the Volcanic Viper. Pobotino not giving him the burst yet. Break the wall. Nice bait. When the eye beat on the forward heavy, well, we mean business. Yeah, Volcanic Viper again as soon as we get into the range of the scramble. I thought he was going to use it one more time, but the 5K is also one of the premier scramble tools that souls rely on. 2-0 lead for Pobotino off to a hot start. We talked about how good it was just speed alone, but the fact it autocorrected too as that entire wow, best case scenario. And this lead alone, it's like we were talking about how 
explosive soul is this is like watching a volcano erupt you can't look away and it's just destroying everything beautifully right now well oh, man oh man chip looking like pompeii out here that's uh, quite sad to be honest <laughs> he is not looking like he's gonna survive this explosion at the moment it, it is rough uh and right now i mean popatina is just gonna a good job really baiting out those bursts nice and early every time right chip has been trying to get out of those far yeah. s's and instead and nah nah has just been stuffed it's adding up, but not enough. Like, just seeing the clean hit DP that one round again was another 50-60%, you know? That's like three knockdown equivalent, just wreck of pressure mid-screen. Yeah, oh, the oh, Alpha Blade <laughs> actually does clip him for just a second. A rare moment of Pobotino actually not challenging. Oh my goodness, just stabs him into the ground with the Aye. forward heavy slash. And then again, RC, charge dust. Oh my goodness, has the perfect spacing on these combos. Doesn't get the kill he needs, but he finds the one he wants. Yeah, got it on the uppercut. And it, it all went super downhill off that counter hit close slash on the run up throw. Man, maybe Golga can redo the approach, but it is looking so good for Popatino. Yeah, at this point, Goga can just not find the type of game plan he needs here, but he does have offense. Ooh, RC drift up as well. Ooh, let me get the run. Aye. Okay. Yeah, he wall splatted immediately, so he couldn't get the run loops, but still good. He got that high end low five. Ooh. RC drift good. to the otter. Missed oh, the relaunch. No. Bro, you do not want to give the bad guy this chance, bro. He's the main character <laughs> of the game. You know how anime goes. You give you the protagonist a shot. The Oh, he let him pet the otter, man. He's all hyped oh, now. The Night oh, Raid no. Vortex went under the Shrooken. Oh, my goodness. Bobotino on the verge of bringing this back. Gogo doesn't have his burst. He's going to oh. build it at the end of this RC. combo. He does it, and he RCs to make sure he doesn't wow. get the burst off. Popotino keeping every single meter in the forefront of his mind and making sure he punishes with the RC cleanly. Three to zero. Woo yeah, the classic three to Dota, and it was actually looking good for one second, but... He let him pet the otter. It made his day better. And then he was, he had that much confidence in him. He was like, give me that burst. I would throw it if I could in this game. Yeah, it was like an emotional Man. support otter. He was like, okay, I feel yeah. great now. I'm, my mental and emotional health is <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, I mean, Popotino, just the conversions, the damage, everything was through the roof for this man in this set. You can oh. see the Volcanic Vipers, again, the clean hits just making him pay dearly. RC to keep it safe right here. The counter YRC to try to get something going, but the scramble Volcanic Vipers has been working out, and then the 5k again. And that was the 2-0 game, right? We saw Goga fight a little bit back here in game three. He was able to take, I believe, the second round after Popotino, again, just puts him in the corner and decimates his oh. life over, over and over so explosive oh, but I this mean, was like, it right here guess, oh so pretty oh no. i guess i was right i didn't think i was right going into it. i just wanted to guess but uh man that explosive damage you know chip has all those tools a swiss army knife but you know papa tito was like i'll show you a knife <laughs> wow <laughs> damn that was a lot of damage yeah, great stuff from Popotino, really just running over Goga. And big ups to Goga as well. He looked phenomenal all set, but I mean, sometimes it just happens in this game, right? Especially when we're still all learning it. You just get overwhelmed and you can't find the right answers. Everything you pick is wrong, but everything these fellas has picked is right, especially Acherol, right? 100% win rate, 7 and 0 going into the like the PlayStation Tournament monthly final stats. So this man has not dropped a single game here today, and he's looking strong. While Popotino has also competed in some of our PlayStation tournaments before at the FGC Arcade, I said, like I said before, that's why he has a little bit more stats to his name. But you see, 13 and 3, that is an impressive win rate, and he has made it back to grand finals to face Acherol because of that impressive play. Definitely, but 7 and 0, oh, the king. The king is here. And not only is Leo representing that lion, like you said, the lion is the king of the jungle, and so is Leo in Strive. You know, this game has definitely early set brought, you know, a lot of people talk about how you have to go in there and scrap in this game. And th both these characters are very good at that. And I love the way Popotino really turned the chat's opinion on him around, right? They had the Gogo uh, or the Goga at like 60 something percent, I believe, going into the last match. And then this one, Grand Finals, he's got a reset. And he was like, they were like, nah, 57 percent Popotino. And he's not playing around to start this off, right? He's no. like, Axel Lowe is the game, the, per the character that got me the two wins in the winner semi set. That's who we're going to start off with in Grand Finals. Duel 
Yeah, one. don't mess around. If anything, bring your main out in the last game. But, you know, play that counter first and try to take as much as you can. Yeah, exactly right. And that's ex what he's going to be looking to do to start it off while Akerol already has him in the corner. Trying to prevent any and all pressure from Popotino to get started. Oh. Yes, the pillar transition hey, catches him low. Ooh, once Leo's on, Axel wall. has to play his game. Yeah. Oh, what a bait on the throw. Keeps it simple. Oh. Yeah, the RC flashing again. The drift down, right? He immediately is able to apply pressure on the ground because of that ability. So that's why Pobotino just got caught maybe holding up back, not watching his toes. I'm surprised he went for the up follow-up. I would have wanted Leo to be more away unless I was going for the safe jump. Really good adjustment from Pobotino right there. We saw in their first set, Akerol had the flash kick ready after that up Rensen every time. Oh, to the other hey. side, gets him. Pobotino oh, gets counter him the big guard break. But that move is frightening. And when it counter hits you, oh, you're just eating a ton. He got away with murder getting out of there. Oh, the jump that time, it looked like he tried to press a button, but he went with the jump jab, which is a better air-to-air -air button than, like, trying to hit someone on the ground with it. True. Bringing him in, using that frame advantage on landing frames. Yeah, I think Agarol Corner. thought he ended up on the other side, too. Oh! The reaction on the stand punch. That yeah, was preemptive. Was... Wow, what a read. Whatever button you were going to press, he was like, I'm super in it, bro. Again. Oh, again! Oh! oh. <laughs> now, if y'all remember, this Pobotino Agarol set got a little disrespectful towards the end. So <laughs> I, I feel like oh, they're 16. kind of uh, bringing that attitude, that vibe, once again, to grand finals. True. Oh, time stop? Leo. That's what I'm talking about. Let me see something with it. Yeah, he Turn just around. ran back it out. Ooh, scary. Trying to fight out this corner. Back and back up. Didn't want to get crossed up. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Akerol does have the tension now after that successful fireball. Jumps out of the command throw as well. Oh, tripped up but yeah he has the rc and he's gonna use it for the fireball pressure and he actually just goes with a low after the 2k into the sweep yeah the double low there tricky because off the 2k is he gonna cross up is he gonna go in front so many options you know not enough life to really guess yeah i think pobotino was definitely looking for the uh cross up there especially with the fireball being on the screen i think that's what he thought the Leo would go for, right? Because a lot of the time the fireball can kind of prevent them from mashing throw on the cross up. So I think that's definitely where Popotino's head went. And instead, Akron was just, I'm committing to the 2D, bro. Double low. Because if you get caught flinching for a second, then that's the only damage I need. Very smart decision making. Yeah. Definitely. Very, very smart decision making. And this is not easy at all for Leo to get in. Like, uh, no. I know I keep emphasizing, like, it's his turn what he is in, but just the like a lot of these decisions of setting him in and and not trying to get that spacing it back i'd rather not get that extra damage and just keep throwing rensen explosion or go for otg rensen I'm, I'm interested on the approach here yeah i mean one of the rounds we saw Akerol, he really couldn't get in until that super right those those hail mary yeah. supers actually worked out huge Double trouble <laughs> yeah. thought we we're gonna get a third of the shades of kizzy there but nah and right now Pobotino used his burst early and it whiffed entirely so as you can see, not a lot of bursts are built back via the unsuccessful one. And that is that going to be a rough spot to be a nice challenge. That has been uh, his bread and butter, really, when it comes to that spacing. That far S, nice I believe trade. it is. But still gets the follow-up combo. Man, just dictating with this 5S neutral. Good punish. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's a little too far from the corner. Trying for the charge does. We saw a couple of those in the first set as well. Pobotino ready. Sends it back to full screen. Says, you got to get in on me. Or if you do, it'll be the plus frames. And you saw him respect the flash kick right there once he dragged uh, Akerol back in. I mean, he's seen it before. This is the second yeah. time. So there's definitely more of a match of information and then feeling right now. Ooh, the jump back. They, they both have each other's numbers in different ways right now. Ooh, able to slow down the jump. Couldn't quite get the air throw he was looking for, but gets the ground throw and the side switch. Blows up the button attempt. Oh, just outside of range of that parry, but inside the range of Leo's maneuvers. Once again, taking another round. 
Oh. Nice backdash, but the burst. Coming to that 5P and getting that range. And the IED works. Wow. And you able to apply more pressure here. This is exactly what Pobotino wants to get. Oh, never mind. I lied. Sorry. Gets knocked down, <laughs> dragged to the corner. Oh. Definitely not what you want. That 5S is twirling. Got the hula hoop ready. Ooh. Yeah, and he found that little gap in the jump to not get clipped by the up Renson. He's got to find Aye. it one more time, though. Oh, the he gets the super punish. I like punish. that run through. Really good. Wall Felt break. that delayed explosion on the jump and used the run forward super. Like, really smart. Oh, Aye. good High time. Popatino. Yeah. Using that last bit of damage he needed. The OTG follow-up to that gives him a W on the board. Well done, man, because it's so easy to get ran over, so easy to lose your momentum up against that Leo. You could see Akerol was applying the pressure, putting the screws to him towards the end, but he stayed composed. And that's the type of defense you need on characters like Axel, right? These characters that, like, get overwhelmed when you're close but can keep you at range. It's always been like that. Yeah, and it's, it's literally like... You, you could break the matchup down more based on what range it is if you really wanted to. But for the most part, you're going to be full screen and biting your lip trying to get in as Leia. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, your hardest. Whatever you could possibly do. Trying to <laughs> maneuver around the up Rensons. Make sure you dodge the low stuff, right? Because, like, he has an answer for the Berserker Slash, right? A lot of the time you want to, like, get across the screen on the ground with the Berserker Slash quickly. But the 2H is good. Just the Renson alone will stuff that. So, yeah, he definitely has to think of a different way to try to get in. Oh, I like that, that 5K was, at the start, How did you though. say that? Yeah. <laughs> Very crafty. And using the meaties to fish the counter hits. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is already a good bounce back from Pobotino, though. Putting a good amount of damage on Akerol, but he couldn't guess oh. right. Gets the cross <laughs> sub back turn slash into the super. Oh, my. Is this dead? Oh, no. He no. didn't break the wall. I thought he was going to break okay. the wall. Just a little bit closer, maybe. Yes. Nice jump in with the double hit H. Got that read on the super. Or maybe just didn't do anything and jumped in. Yeah, the super, the, the way to punish the Axel super is just how he did it, right? You block the first hit, jump the second, and then jump you're in. good to go. Yep. If you don't, it's safe on block, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you have to jump that second hit or else you're not punishing him. Mm, breaks the wall. It's going to be a positive frame situation here. Tech. Nice. That's the second time I've seen them do. That's the first time this set, but. <laughs> wow, what a 2H in the corner. Yeah, Akerol was waiting for it. Man, it really, the pace is so different on the Axel victories and the Leo victories, right? Once again, oh, a mother's recipe and my genius. Excuse me, that is the quote. <laughs> my goodness, yeah, that's Leo. That's a very good quote. It and is. That's a, that's a good, uh, a, that's good facts to bring up, you know. This game does go incredibly fast, but there are a few matchups in this game that, you know, do slow down a lot given the character's tool sets. And Axel is definitely somebody that can slow down that pace and play the clock in this game. Like, you don't see many time overs, but you probably will in certain Axel matchups. Yeah, yeah. We've seen uh, one or two. I think uh, Zato and Nagori Yuki actually is a really slow matchup as well once Nagori Yuki gets leveled up because then, like, you want to summon Eddie and you just, like, swipe and you're just like, okay, it's well, like, yeah. <laughs> I'll just stay over here and not summon Eddie then. Then what are you going to do? And you guys just stare at each other. But that's another one, right? Axel is uh, definitely <laughs> a character that wants you to stay on the other side. He's like, he can, he'll bring you close with the up Renson sometimes because he'll be plus frames at it. But if it's not that, he wants you to stay far away. I, I like how you brought up that level 2-3 because when I was playing Faust, that was my strategy with 2-H was <laughs> if he was level 2 or 3, I he could hit me now like way <laughs> yeah, more exactly. than I can hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, most definitely. You got to be on the lookout for that. Just like Akerol is going to be looking out for the Popotino range on this Axel, right? Trying to figure out exactly what angles are going to be proper for his approach. And you can see already getting stuffed early. Ooh, the throw after. Nice jump back slash. And wow, really good with the throws. Yeah, I felt like really Akerol would have like came onto it by now. But it's one of those mix ups where it's like it's so easy to set up and it's just effective. Yeah, exactly right. He's been just kind of betting on the risk reward of taking the throw a lot of the time. He's rather just deal with that than risk getting counter hits sent to full screen. But either way, Pobotino closing mm. out the first round with a perfect. Wow. Close to that. 
tie up here. Oh, man. Yeah, what oh, a throw. Wow. Yeah, he knew he hit that jump in super high, so he respected the uh, like the frame advantage that Popotino was at. Oh. And Popotino went with the dash up throw. That was a super good decision. Jumps the Berserker Slash to get the punish out. there. The throw. Oh, no. Hey. It can all come crashing down, bro. He got his legs checked. Popotino not oh, speaking the burst just yet. Nice jump out of the command grab. Bet it all. I like that because if it if it hit, you know that would <laughs> it would have sent Popotito off into another zone. Like I got hit one more time by that. What? Yeah, the, the, the mental damage. That's like an unburstable thing too, right? Like you know he was thinking about the burst very soon. So if you get hit with the command throw, that's damage you have to eat. That's damage you can burst, yeah. and it's gonna put him in a situation where you're like you have to burst the next combo or you're gonna die. So I I do like the command throw. It, it took a lot of balls to do it, but if it hit, it was a big reward for sure. True, true, true. Yeah, so good stuff to Akron. I mean, he's been willing to put his life on the line a couple of times, right? We've seen him do flash kick without any meter. He is willing to bet it and risk it because in those situations, that's when the opponent's not expecting you to risk it, right? It's in those situations where it's like, okay, he doesn't have the meter to make this save or this situation will cost him the game. So obviously he's not going to do it. And Akron is like, no, because you think it's obvious that I'm not going to do it. That is exactly what I'm going to do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, man. But those, that becomes some of the best mix-ups, especially short set tournament sets, like two out of three, three out of five. You know, mm -hmm. it's the I know you know, so am I going to stop or am I not, you know? Yeah, yeah. And now we already got the throw to try to keep him in that corner here. Again, this is grand finals. So Popotino trying to get one more W on the board to get the reset going. Oh, oh no. Wow, missed the burst punish. Yeah, definitely unfortunate. Going to bring him close as well. Try to get that last bit of health he needs. The AoE slow did not actually affect Axel right. there. Gets the parry. Oh, no. Oh, the guard break was too slow. But he ended up keeping He's the corner. Bobatino was not holding forward. Throw is enough damage in the scramble. Wow. I wonder if he went for sweep or something else. And just being that close punishes the gap. I, I got to look that up. And yeah, of course, we're all still learning. Still very early on to the Guilty Gear Strive lifespan, yes. so uh, we love seeing these interactions and the answers oh. that the players have for them. Command throw, Popotino all on the verge of a reset here. Popotino getting so much mileage off these counter hit stand slashes. Just hula hooping away. Oh, yeah, you see he's FDing, trying to keep him away from something like that guard break, but the PRC into the Bye. air throw. Oh, back dash. Ooh, the oh, the through the jump bro. slash. He really so just did that to him. Oh, what happened? He wants to keep you the want corner. That hard oh. Yeah, he, yeah, he wants to keep the corner. He didn't want the wall break. He knows he can do oh. stuff like this. Get a throw and no. a command throw. Acker all prioritizing the fact that, that he didn't want to put Axel back mid screen, right? That was such an interesting decision. And now we're at Popotino set point and Acro tournament point. It could go either way here. Yeah, that was a so interesting. Popotino oh. now trying to get it. He does catch the heavy slash fireball. Damn. Looking for it. Called it out. Wow, that that special is very negative. You definitely use that when you want to call out something else on the mix up to get around Rensen or the throw. And Ooh. the twirl. We are yeah, resetting it. Put an L on both their chests. So this is the final, final set of Grand Finals. Man, uh, Shin even, Grand Finals. Even though Agarol lost, all I want to talk about is that decision to not break the wall there. That was like, yeah. it, it was so cool. Because he hit the gold burst, right? And then he does the super. But he RCs it early because obviously that wall breaks, right? And even with the frame advantage after, he prioritized having the corner rather than giving uh, Axel an ability, a chance to fight at mid-screen again, right? And one of those things, or two of those things, I should say, that's really good in the corner when your wall is about to break are throws. Because throws do a good amount of damage in the corner without hitting the wall at all. So we saw the regular throw come out as soon as that happened, and then he did the command throw follow-up after that. So yeah, that was a really interesting decision-making from Akral. We don't see that a lot in this game yet, but I do suspect <laughs> I we'll see a little bit more of it going forward.
I like how late it happened though. Like he did the super and then at one point was like, no, like I, even if I have an extra bar of tension and positive, I still have to get in and that's been yeah. a problem. Like I, that's, that's smart. Yeah, that was a, that was really cool. Really cool to see. But Popotino managed to clutch out that last game regardless of that cool decision making. And now we're at 0-0 zero, zero all over again. And Akerol doesn't have any type of lead to work with or to uh, let his mind rest on a bit. And Popotino already knows. This character can go to limit these sets. The, the first two was not a fluke. Yeah, exactly right. He got Ooh, two rainfall. games. The only game that Akerol defeated him in that very first set was one, right? So Akerol did bring it two more games, but overall the uh, set has still favored Pobotino's Axel. And at this point, it's still favoring him. Does get the plus frames, but so much respect for the flash kick actually allowing Akerol to press buttons on it. Ooh. The bring Ooh, back yeah. with the burst and now the corner is his. That's like prime burst positioning in the super. Mm -hmm. Hey. Now he doesn't have the corner anymore, but the positive situation here allows very oppressive offense. Nice air to air conversion. Oh my goodness, Pobotino risking it with the burst here. Try to hold on to this round. He's still in the corner. Oh my goodness. The whiff throw though. Will it be enough damage? No, puts him on a magic pixel. Oh my god. Both players gotta use their FD to survive the last hits. Ooh. RC here. And the oh, double low. My the double low again, clutching it out in that last instance. Atro. That was that was a very clutch. Ooh. And another good jump on the command throw as well he really hasn't been able to catch Akerol sleeping much oh tumbling to the corner and eats that low that is not good super Ouch. gonna break the wall you gotta guess as well fam he's been doing a great job of blocking these throws oh he actually just wakes up with a button right there i'm not sure if that was another like whiffed into throw setup but either way he gets stuffed Woo. twirling it up Anti-air? No, gets crossed up by the jump dust. Oh my god. Hard knockdown dancing. What a cross up. Oh, oh, and he brings out the flash kick again. It had been so long since eating the up Renson that he responded with a flash oh. kick. Saves it for a time. It's gonna win a match. Akerol right back out into the lead. Just do it, you know? That was so sick, I mean, man, because we saw so many up Renses at that point that were respected because of the flash kick and he took his jab. We saw him get thrown when he actually did decide to block. It's been a while since he's done the flash kick off of that. What a decision. Yeah, when you're blocking in the air and you hit the ground, you have small recovery, but you can cancel that into a special. So that hard call out there, while a very risk, risky, got some money in the pocket there, almost taking it through, but... First game, second set is crucial, especially when you just went down. Yeah, exactly. When you, especially when you're the person that just got reset on. Now you're at zero yeah. zero for the the true first time, right? You don't have a three game advantage anymore. It's very important to maintain that advantage that you went in with. So now he can kind of breathe a little bit easier. He's still in the lead in this uh, grand finals, grand finals, you know. So we got yep. one oh four Akerol. We'll see how Povetino responds. It's, I'm sure it's going to be Axel all the way through at this point. Because nothing's worse than losing the first set and then losing that first game and you're just second guessing yourself. Yeah, that's when the momentum really starts to get away from you. This is a, this is a counter matchup. He needs, we need all the rounds here. <laughs> yeah, Nacarol gonna be respecting the Renson explosion. Nice though. He knows he's been delaying it quite a bit to try to catch jump outs. So instead oh. he just takes the Berserker slash forward advancing special. That lead. Nice jump back slash. Ooh, yeah. I mean, Popatino was getting in, but couldn't stay in for long. Yeah, now Sakura. Oh, catches him with a low. I don't think he was expecting the low to reach that far. It's got some good distance on it, though, fam. Yeah, you can see Akerol even just jumping regular, not wanting to get clipped by the up Renson. So he's not doing a lot of air nice. dashes. Nice parry. Very Ooh. nice. Get that 5K out of oh, here. Oh, parry again. just a little bit too early. I like how Akerol is dictating, dictating the flow, even if, like, this is a matchup where it's incredibly hard to get in. He's just like, all right, react to these specials right now. Yeah. Or I'll lose. 
<laughs> Leo, <laughs> like Leo dictating the pace in this matchup against Axel is very difficult to do so. And he has been doing oh. it this set. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's just spent it. He's, He's got gonna be punished. Oh, oh not he doesn't even use it. I wonder if Pobotino was expecting the burst. And yeah, maybe he just wanted the hard knock down. Throw. Ooh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely, right? I expected Akarol to burst after that super, but I also expected Pobotino to go for a big punish, and he didn't, right? He just went for the knockdown. So, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is interesting to see how these players have made some decisions against each other. You could tell that they have uh, really processed some of the information they got. And I don't know how much they play outside of this tournament, but they've played a lot of rounds against each other in this tournament already. Already, so, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of information on the table. Just like that alone just could have been like, oh, the last time I went for this, he bursted right away or something like that. You know, And, so. and he did, right? Remember, we saw on the when he got charged dusted, he didn't burst that one time. He didn't burst on the charge mm. dust, and when he landed, he immediately did super and then bursted the punish. So, yeah, I think that's what Pobotino was looking out for. He's like, okay, I see the random super again. He's looking to burst my punish right after, so he just takes the 2K, 2D hard knockdown. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty high level, honestly. No, yeah, the burst is super crucial in this game because it, it can give you that turn you need, and it can give you all the meter you need to play. So, yeah. And then on a call out, you can punish it big, too. And then Pobotino looking to escape the corner for now. Ooh, smacked in the face. And yeah, actually punished the parry and jumped away from the burst. Oh. Okay, Pobotino looking real good this round. He ran right into the fan. I know it's a hot day, but damn. Yeah, trying to cool off. You can catch this lariat. Again, <laughs> and when your back is against the wall, it is so tough to jump that command throw. Oh, Berserker Slash to get through. Yeah, kind of scrambly there. Ended up tagging in a situation where it wasn't expecting him to get hit, so the command throw just whiffed entirely. Oh, oh double back trouble. To back. Yeah, he blocked Two that servings, one in please. The air. <laughs> it is a hot day, like you said. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, the super oh. works this time. Yeah. Gonna break the wall. Guess for game. Oh, I... you guessed wrong. Berserker Slash on the cross-up. The tie-up. One to one. One round each. Who wants the lead in this final set? Yeah, and then this is feels very much uh, like a slowdown pace from the first two games. See both players. Oh, oh my it. goodness. Yeah, the, the momentum <laughs> from the vacuum uh, ended up working out, right? The scramble. Right. Into the throw. Oh, gold burst because he tried another command throw, so that was a <laughs> gap. Wow. Ooh, nice conversion. Yeah, that was sick. Pobotino has full bar. Yeah, super right away. That's why. Oh, yeah, he was Got waiting for it. In. Jumped it immediately. Wow, and took a trade at, at, after spending all that meter. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's exactly not what Pobotino wanted. Ooh, flash kick after the 2D. Wow. Man, oh, With girl. But, but that's smart, right? Because often when you see sweeps in this game, sweeps have a lot of recovery. And usually yep. because of that, people will cancel the sweeps into something. So he tried to expose mm -hmm. that gap of the special cancel with the DP, and he clipped him with whatever uh, Pobotino tried to do. So Akarol out to a lead again, 2-1. As soon as the leads get away from him, he takes them right back. Yeah, that sweep Brensen, really annoying. But it does have a big enough gap that, you know, he'll have to use that half circle back heavy air launcher swipe attack, that new move to mm -hmm. call out moves that they would do faster, but flash kick. What are you yeah. gonna do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Flash that, kick. that is an answer to any and all gaps. Invincible on startup, gonna expose it as long as there's a frame to expose. And now Popotino, yeah. like we said, right? We expected him to stay on the axle throughout this set with his back against the wall with one game remaining, with two hearts remaining to his name. He's going to uh, stick with the axle. And already doing a good job making sure he gets nice damage and a significant life lead to start the game. But unfortunately for him, he's found his back to the corner. What Ooh. a backdash. Right? I actually thought he was going to get clipped active on the last part. Now brings him close with the OTG. What with the flash kick. kick has got great horizontal range. It would actually clip him even after that. Oh, that's a and punish. He, you know it's long set because lots of scrambles right now, and they're both calling each other out straight up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The longer the set goes, the harder the reads get. Yep. 
<gasps> you spoke it into reality range. What a super. Oh my god. Dude, Felt he, that one. The parry whiff that he was like, you know oh. what I'm gonna do? You see the parry whiff, so you're gonna come down with a button and he just supered it. I cannot believe. Yo. Acro feels the throne. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Will the king sit pretty today? Can Axel knock him off the throne? He can travel through time and space, but I don't know. I do not know. Nice. That's fireball coming through again. PRC to slow him down. Oh. Akral has the corner. He even baited out the DP with the crouch Ooh. jabs. Jump over the for jump. the punish. Tries to bait the burst as well, but Pobletito won't give it to him. Oh, bait the throw. Wow, the gold burst doesn't work. Yeah, Still gets the yeah. counter hit. Pobletito oh. getting that back dash. Still anybody's game here oh. has the corner. Go slow. Oh, got the combo. Oh, that is the enough. Super. Akerol takes it 3-1 oh. to close it out after the grand finals reset. Great adjustments after Pobotino took the first set. The champion reigns supreme. The king sits on his throne again. And like he yes. said, only two things in this world are insurmountable. A mother's recipe and that genius on Leo, baby. <laughs> well, that recipe paid off because, you know, Axel wasn't hungry enough. He ate that burger and let it let it slip that final set, you know. Yeah, maybe I mean, should have waited for some for a home cooked meal, you know. I don't know. He needed it. Yeah, maybe maybe he'll find his way back home and get one eventually <laughs> after that L he just took from Leo. But I don't know. He's he's got a lot of time and space to travel to get there as Akerol taking that True. first place. And remember, we were playing for some moolah today as well. So he's gonna be taking home that four hundred dollar <laughs> prize pot for first. Akerol, oh excuse me, that was Akerol that took home the first place. Pobotino gonna be taking home three hundred for second place, and then the rest of our participants as well. Third place, I believe, was let me see, it was Goga. That's right. Thank you, Goga. Gonna be taking home two hundred and third place, and then our fourth place participant, Z? which was a Zed, gonna be taking yeah. home a hundred bucks. So good stuff to all of our nice. competitors as well today. It was a great top eight. I mean, I enjoyed it from top to bottom super confident top eight and they're definitely have been showing how this game has been going in a lot of brackets you know the, yeah. a lot of axles a lot of leos a lot of souls a lot of people wanting to win but there's one thing that i noticed and it's how much time they put in the, a lot of these players you can tell by their awareness in so many situations have been cutting sleep for this game <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I feel you i've been there exactly i mean yeah we talked about it at the top of the show right me and you we've grinded these guilty gear games together we've been up yeah. till 3 a.m 4 a.m playing this and the guilty gear strive it's got that same characteristic it's so easy to rematch such a fast-paced game i mean you just fiend this game so hard and you can see the final results Akerol able to take it 3-1 in the recent after popotino clutched out that grand finals 3-2 reset good stuff like i said to all of our competitors though i enjoyed the bracket thoroughly yeah, honestly, it was an amazing tournament bracket. Saw a lot of good variety early set and towards the end, you know, very dominant gameplay, a lot of top tier gameplay all, all around. So, you know, yeah. I, I was definitely impressed. Really cool decision making by Akron and Popotino as well, right? We saw some interesting decisions that we don't get to see a lot that involved high level uh, reads on the opponent's tendencies and their decision making. And I just, I really loved it. It was, it was good stuff. It gave me a lot to think about and a lot to enjoy. So if you enjoyed it as well, thanks again for watching, but you could also get in on this action. I don't know if y'all know, but you can go to compete.playstation.com to actually enter in these tournaments yourself for Guilty Gear Strive, Tekken 7, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and the like. There's all kinds of stuff going down on compete.playstation.com. You can see the schedule going down just in a couple of days, right? We got June 28th tomorrow, got the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War oh, monthly Call finals. Duty? Oh, yes, sir. And then the day after that, Soul Calibur 6, we're getting back to the fighting game love monthly finals oh, on June cool. 29th and Mortal Kombat 11 all the way on July 28th, going to be 9 a.m. Pacific time for the monthly hey. finals on the next Mortal Kombat. I cannot wait for that. I always enjoy the Mortal Kombat tournaments, especially here on PlayStation. And I mean, in general, if you're looking to be part of any of that, like I said, hit that compete.playstation.com. That's where you're going to be able to get on the show, compete in those tournaments, free entry. And if you're not even looking to participate, you can also find out some in-depth analysis 
from these games, from talent, from players, and just in general, get a closer and more in-depth look on the competitive video game scene. And it's all at compete.playstation.com. So while y'all go and do that, you know what I'm saying? We're going to take a little break here, but we're actually not done for the day. It, it, well, I, should, I say a little break, but it's going to be a bit of an extended one. We still have the North American finals to go through for Guilty Gear Strive coming up. And I believe in about two hours at 2 p.m. Pacific time, I believe, or is it 1 p.m. Pacific time? Let me see. I, I, will, I will double check. Let me. Uh, yeah, we got up two early. Oh, it is we two watched that okay. tech. Okay. Yeah, we did get up last early. Night, we wanted to make sure. Last night we were watching, and then we just went right to bed for this. So. <laughs> I, I, know, I was like, I'm ready for the strive. If you want to put it on now, we can do it now. But we're going to take a, yeah. a short break. You guys can have a little bit of time to go get lunch. Sign up at compete.playstation.com for some future tournaments. And just in general, relax a bit. Because we'll be back in two hours with Guilty Gear Monthly Finals North America. Thanks for chilling with us for the EU Finals. It was fantastic from top to bottom. And see y'all soon. Let's rock. Bullshit's lazy, still my heart is lazy